Opa! Welcome everybody to Stavish World. What a beautiful day this is. Honestly, I am pumped. We have in, we're gonna get, we have an incredible show. Louis Katz is here, but we have this is a very exciting time here at Stavish World. Um, the Fat Rascal Tour is ending. My big final shows of the Fat Rascal Tour are December first. One last show at the Beacon Theater. Two shows sold out already at the historic Beacon Theater. If you want to be a part of the last show I ever do with this hour, this material, go to the Beacon Theater Friday, the first late show, 10 o'clock. It's going to be awesome. And why am I going to stop doing that material? Because on December 5th, my special comes out on the big end. We're pumped for it. We can't wait. Fat Rascal, the tour is ending, and it's giving birth to to the special Fat Rascal that we'll be streaming on December 5th. And hey, if you can't support me coming live, please watch the special. But if you want to do something else, if you're not in New York, you could support me by supporting some of our beautiful sponsors. Helix is one of them. Support them. You're allowing them to support me. They are offering 20% off all mattresses, all mattress orders, and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash stavi and use code HELIXPARTNER20. That's Stavi, slash Stavi, S-T-A-V-V-Y. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. And, you know, maybe, maybe you got that covered. I don't know what to tell you. But maybe you need to get clean ass, okay? And if that's the case, if you got a musty little hole, <laughs> what you're going to want to do is check out our friends at Tushy. That's right, folks. Take care of yourself from the bottom up this holiday season, visit hellotushy.com forward slash Stavi and use promo code Stavi, S-T-A-V-V-Y, for 10% off your first order. Don't miss out on their Spend and Get event going on now through November 18th. That's hellotushy.com slash Stavi. That's the big show, final show at the Beacon Theater, December 1st, and the special December 5th. Now, let's play the music again, Eld. Bye-bye. Welcome, everybody, to Stavi's World 904-800-STAV. Uh, we're very happy to have my boy Louie Katz in the studio. What's up? What's up, buddy? Just put out a special present tense on YouTube right now. That's it's right. doing fucking great. Hilarious. Very good special. Yeah, buddy. Go Everybody go watch it. And Louie, thanks for being here, man. Dude, thanks for having me. I've, I've seen all the clips. It's crazy to be here actually in studio. I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah, we flew him out to Greece. We're right. We're going to go for a dip right after this. Dude, that's the dream of this podcast is like we just find a way to add. This is the... This is the backdrop. We're just on in a villa. Dude, you we're on the do balcony. That, that Dude, would be incredible. We're try okay. I don't want to give away too much about our summer plans. <laughs> this is but the plan? me and Eldis are tr we're trying to figure out a way to like rent a sick house in Greece and just like you know do do like enough podcasts where it is technically a business expense. And we can write it all off. <laughs> I think you can totally do that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can like save some refugees from the sea, have them Let's come not in get and... crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to run a business, Louie. <laughs> now, do they know how to edit clips? <laughs> that is actually, that would be fucking hilarious, dude. We got to turn some Palestinians into like clip editors. That's how we're going to help the, that's how we're going to help this whole thing. Stop the, let's get a ceasefire, stop the occupation, and let's teach them how to fucking do, to put clips on pussy jokes. That's true. <laughs> Why haven't they tried crowd work over Why? there? Why? That's, that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We're going to go. We go over there. Just the least useful shit of all time. <laughs> Comedians being like, we'll teach you how to do crowd work. <laughs> That's how I got my family out of poverty. That can buy a lot of rockets. For I can buy a lot of snipers pointed at Netanyahu, my friend. <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. Yeah. Uh, that I is, think, that I think is you could do the real villa thing. I think I mean, I that's totally doable. Hopefully. We got to, yeah. gotta like, I'm trying to take a ton of time off next year, just not be on the road. And so I think, like, I want to spend a month in Greece. That's and if great. we can just tack on... Stavi's world. If I can convince, if I can convince a couple comedians to take their vacation in Greece, why wouldn't they? And then just come on by for a couple of days to to the Stavi's world villa. <laughs> that's but then everyone can write it off. 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, everyone I know, can write it up. Plan. Yeah, yeah. This is a great plan. I'm saying I'm in already. If All right. Like, Come on through, brother. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, dude. Thanks for coming through. Uh, a bit, you know. It's nice to. It's. I'm happy that you put the special out. Yeah, man. Hilarious comic. If you guys don't know Lou, you got to go check his shit out. Um, and a very funny special. And it was. I mean, I you it. you shot it. You said you shot it a while ago, right? Dude, I shot it last May, so it's been almost it's like almost a year and six months that wow. it took me putting it together. Uh, in between, not only it took took a long time. In between, then I also got married. Which yeah, is, I know that's what I was. I was like, because it was shit. I was like, this is funny, but I was like, he's talking about being single. Yes, <laughs> and I, was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I thought he was married. You yeah, know what I mean? But I feel bad you know. about it because like <laughs> yeah. the, the special's about be going through a horrible breakup and being sad and alone. <laughs> And now I'm married and happy, so yeah. I'm, trying, I'm actually kind of trying to hide that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel bad for me. It's so sad, but the truth is, things are all right. It has yeah, a happy ending. Yeah. Everything's the special's doing well, and I got a wife. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, all good, yeah, you yeah. Know? It would be so funny if this like catapults you into fame, and you cheat on your wife, and you're back, you're back to square one, and then you put a, you put out a special about how happy and married you are right now. But by the time it, by the time it comes out, you've got all this road pussy, and you've ruined your your finally good life. You finally figured it out and you're like nah the special went viral bitch get the step in <laughs> I'm out yeah no it's it is interesting because the the special is like this you had you're like yes you're it's like a snapshot of a guy who's really trying to figure his shit out yeah you thanks. know like yeah. there was yeah. there was like you're yeah you were going through the breakup you're talking about being single and then it was like you're like a first time therapy patient in yeah, it it's I, like, I, well that's true I'm, yeah i didn't do i never tried therapy before and only only like recently that's like new for me it's crazy how um fucking neurotic and crazy and yeah, it that's, took me so long i know? would it's have kind of embarrassing. If, if people they don't even have to know you they just need to look at one picture of you <laughs> and, and literally at any stage of your life you've looked at like four different types of jewish people you know what i mean like like you, now it's classic you've aged into this is it for the next Probably twenty it's years. It's gonna get funnier and funnier. It's gonna looking, get funnier, you know? it's gonna funnier. Gonna, the, ears the nose get bigger. The ears yeah, get bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna yeah. get crazy. At a certain point, you gotta grow it out. That's be what I that want to go full curly. I just want to wait till the top goes down, and then I just want to go full yep. Larry David. You know, dude, that was style. that was. I always said until the pandemic, my goal was because I've always had like this weird diffuse. Yes. Like when I went bald, where I was like, where I was like, fuck, if I had a horseshoe. Yeah, I would be perfect. I right? would be growing it out. That was always my cowardice. But then the <laughs> pandemic happened. I was like, let's just see what happens. Best decision I've ever made in my life. I've never felt more myself. No, totally. Than a guy with hair like this. <laughs> it's awesome. No, it's weird how like some of those transitions. Like, do you know Shang Wang is one of my best friends. You yeah. see him. He like he went full like full. He has full long hair. Yeah, I saw. I do think that happened for in the pandemic for a lot of people. Yeah. we were cowards. Who didn't want to try it out in front of people. And then with nothing but time, we're like, this is what I'm really like. But it, yeah, but it's also weird how it's like, oh, this is how you should have been the whole time. Like, this right. is the form. You have, yes. you know, this is your vinyl form. Yes. You know? I've had many people, eldest included, be like, it's so weird you haven't had this hair forever. Because <laughs> I was fucking completely, I was like cue ball. Yeah. Probably when we met, I was completely yeah, yeah. cue ball. Not even like, you know, I might not even have the mustache when we met. I was just completely hairless when I first got to New York. Um, and that was strange. And then actually, even the mustache was like a weird, I got this fucking jaw. I had like a benign tumor. No oh, shit. And it was, when, before I knew it was benign, believe me, I was fucking That's scared. Horrific. Because I, I was broke. I was like, we had just started making a little money on Come Down, but nothing, Jeez. not enough to cover unexpected jaw cancer yeah, a, you know what i mean not a, not a new jaw yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. um and and uh it fucked me up so much that i just like i, I didn't like touch my face at all and like i uh, like i had a ton of growth uh -huh. and i was just shaving it off and i started with this and i was just like huh well this is kind of funny as this mustache and i just like tried it out the way you do uh -huh. and people were like whoa dude that looks kind of cool and i was like really and i was like all right, we got a new thing. It was before the tooth came out, too. I had a mustache. <laughs> then the tooth came out. It's been a lot of stuff. You had a lot of classic looks. A lot, yeah. The worst is when you film something when you're going through a bad look. Yes. I have my, my this is not happening. I have a mustache beard combo. Okay. A mustache stubble beard combo, oh. which is like, it's not even a thing, really. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I invented yeah. a new form of facial yes. hair that doesn't look right. That's an extra dirtbag move. Pull that up, Elders. Come on. <laughs> Fucking do some producing, for God's sake. I heard you typing. I was like, oh, he might be doing his job. And no, of course not. God knows what you were up to. 
<laughs> what the fuck were you even typing if you weren't looking that up, asshole? Tell me. Tell the people what you were typing. In this business, I had to text something to Ben. Okay, all right. <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> I got the logs. <laughs> no, all, all the company devices are surveyed, so Sam can pull them yeah. up from his laptop. You can, you can never let an Albanian to his own devices, Louie. That's uh, if, if, if you're ever unfortunate enough to have an Albanian working for you, you have to keep him under watchful eye the whole time. Let's pull up Louis Katz. This is not happening. He wasn't even fucking listening. He can't even. He, he couldn't know. even. He no <laughs> oh, yeah, that. that's like weird, tough. Like, which is it? Is it a mustache? Is <laughs> yeah. it a beard? It's neither. It's and you know what? Okay, here's the one that I love, though. Go to Louis Katz. Comedy Central half hour. That's a decent look. I uh, no? Let's find out. Let me see how the I bad remember. One it. Is Fallon. My Fallon is a mustache with a soul patch, like kind of like a, a Colonel Sanders, Ooh, like a Jewish Colonel no, Sanders. No, that's look. not a dumbass. That's the one he's going. Come on, man. <laughs> if you go just to look at it, <laughs> images. God damn. <laughs> if you go to my uh, if you go to my channel, it'll have something somewhere. There, that one on the on the right. That that's it. Oh, okay. You know, that wasn't as bad as I remembered it. No, it's just my face. It's just my <laughs> yeah, face. Yeah, you're right. I, what I'm recoiling is your face. <laughs> Can't change that. I thought your hair was floppier for whatever reason. No, no, no. Did you ever shoot something with, like, floppy hair? Am I never misremembering? Had, I haven't had floppy hair since I was uh, in, like, high school or something. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why in my head, because I was, I watched, the, your half hour came, what year was that? Uh, maybe 2011 or something. Yeah, because that was, like, yeah. right in the height of, like, I was like, that was the career goal for me. So I was like watching all of them. So I remember that yeah. class of half hours really yeah, well. Yeah, it's crazy. Chris Stefano was like, I was there in the front row. I was like, wow, I wish yeah. you well, fucking put me on your podcast. Yeah. Like, wow, cool, man. Come on. Like, like, yeah. I have something for the memory. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Chris was wiping shit off of paraplegic's balls <laughs> during the day and then going to see Louie do his half hour at night. Now look at him, dude. <laughs> Theaters, cheating probably. <laughs> Putting his trans uncle slash step uncle slash step aunt on his podcast for views. Well, my, how things change. <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. But yeah, I get, yeah, but you have had a, a couple, a couple hilarious looks. But my point is, any look, you would never look at that guy and be like, he's not been to therapy. Oh, yeah. You know what I yes. mean? Like, yeah. the whole package, when you said that in your special, I was like, what? Yeah. This motherfucker's never been to Just therapy? Started. I have that. It is a classic. Like, people also say, like, you know, I'm not actually from New York, and people are surprised at that. I think right. it just means it's just Jew, Jew, Jew. Yes. It's basically what they're saying. You should be in therapy. You should be a New York Jew in therapy. <laughs> right. And I, I, I only became that a few years ago. Where, yeah, 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 yeah. Where? Wait, where did you grow up? I'm from L.A. You're from L.A. That's yeah. right. Okay. Like, uh, That's yeah. classic too, though. I if you That's know, you know, but some people don't Jew know. Well. You know, yeah, you yeah. Know, there's a lot of Jews out there, but I, people always think I'm from New York. I, right. I think it's because my dad is from New York, so it's like gotcha, this Brooklyn, gotcha, 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 Brooklyn gotcha. history and all that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you're so you grew up in LA. You're like grew up in born, LA. born and raised. Born and raised in LA proper, not gotcha. yeah, actually from there. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. There seems like there's, I mean, just as like there's few people actually from New York. There's few people actually from LA. You know, yeah, it's a trip growing up there. It's like uh, like uh, my substitute teachers would be like struggling actors <laughs> yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. And like, oh, dude, I bet some of the hot there was a lot of beating off to be done to substitute teachers oh, yeah. in LA. Dude, there was the the um the Conan Barbarian like spectacular at Universal Studios the Red Sonia she was our substitute teacher it was dope. oh my god yeah. dude that's incredible yeah. the level of because you didn't have to be hot to get jacked off to by middle schoolers no but if you were you're almost spoiled. You you didn't know there's these not this is not what random women look no, like. No, 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 no. You no. never had to make do with a, like a fat bitch with a lazy eye, <laughs> whose one of her nipples was poking out, and you're like, I could do some with this. If I could <laughs> see it, I was down. But I, I have I have my standards are all over the place anyway. Regardless, yeah, 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 it doesn't yeah, have yeah, you know yeah. not doesn't have to do with being from LA. Just like I got a I got a lot of wide range of things that 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 interest me. you. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Interesting. Yes, I mean I remember again. When I was probably first, because I also opened for Bobby. Yeah. And so seared into my memory is a YKWD appearance you did where you talk about drinking breast milk. Oh, yeah. That was like, <laughs> that like for literally, it's like before I knew you personally, I just kind of <laughs> knew you from your half hour and shit. And then after we like met and I watched, because I, you know, I was on that show a lot and I was hanging out with Bobby a lot, you were to me, it was like, ah, yes, 
Louis Katz, the breast milk guy, the guy like who that. drinks human breast milk from black women. That's, that's literally that's was, literally who you were for like three years in was, my head. It was white woman oh. bl- bl- breast milk at the time. It was. It was yeah, oh, did I confuse I did, two? I, no, I dated a lot of black women, yes. but the breast milk I drank was white woman breast milk. Okay. I just want to yeah. set the, finally set the record straight. You're a breast milk white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, You're like, look, what I do in my sexual spare time is one thing, but I would never put unpure black breast milk in my body. Body. <laughs> is, they have different enzymes no. No. that the white stomach cannot cannot deal no, with. I want to. I will drink anyone's breast milk. <laughs> I've just only had the pleasure of drinking white woman's breast milk. I am down for any 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 kind of breast milk. <laughs> Dude, my friend, there used yeah. to be a, a place in New York where you could get breast milk cheese. That's fucked up, dude. Yeah, but and it was it was it was like it was underground because they wouldn't homogenize it. They were like yeah. it was raw breast milk cheese. I don't know if it was just the homogenization that was the problem. I don't know. It was, that it you... was probably harvesting human milk. Yeah. Might also be the problem. But... Yeah, dude. Just the, like the same Chinese ladies that do nails. They just have them hooked up to fucking breast pumping machines. Like just they're human trafficking everything they could. They got they're jacking people people off in massage parlors are doing nails and they're getting pumped and you're like mm, this is a good b- uh, breast milk brie that I'm having it, but it's just for homogenation that I can't buy it legally I can't use my credit card to buy it that's yeah that is a very interesting like philosophical gray area where it's like can you buy like first of all is it would your wife have a problem with you drinking somebody else's breast milk? There's an element of like, is this cheating weirdly? No, even though it's come not. On. That's not cheating. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, there's an argument to be made of like, is it? Maybe it's not cheating, but it's, it's so like. Well, give me your breast milk then. This like, then if you got, give right. me some of your breast milk. Right, if right, you don't right. want me, to, I'm gonna have to go out in the street. <laughs> well, to get you don't. Milk. Here's the problem. Here's where your argument falls apart. You don't need breast milk. <laughs> Do, <laughs> you don't, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> you are malnourished. <laughs> you're, you're like, if you have a doctor's note, says, I'd, be, I'd be taller with hair if I had breast milk, man. I, I, what if we all started drinking breast milk? All our issues went away. It was like stem cells. My dick grows. I'm not a fat as shit anymore. That would be fucking sick, dude. But yes, there is a, there is like a, like, what is the other, like, thing that comes out of a human body that you would buy? Like, okay, hair, right? Mm hmm. You know, we have weaves made of real human hair. Sure. But you don't consume it like you do milk. Well, I'm... Sh- I mean, pussy juice. Yeah, but exa- that's clearly sexual. Yes. No one's but buying saying, pussy no juice. why no one sold that? I, there's not a real market for it. I think there is. You think... <laughs> hey, you're, you're a big lick, you're a big excretions guy. <laughs> All about the excretions. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's very context dependent. You give... When I'm out of the pussy juice arena... I don't want to see it. When when it should be there, great, naturally. But I don't want I don't want to come across it on a shelf. You know what I mean? I mean, I know what you mean, and you know, no, you don't know where this juice has been. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> dude, when I when I've like uh, having the beard, yes. if I've gone down on, of on a moment and then it's in the beard, I'm walking around that day, confidence, yeah. dude. Yeah, confidence. just walking around smelling oh, pussy so, everywhere. So dude. you think it's more? Yes, I see what the you're pheromones. saying. Pheromones, as a like almost like a cologne. Yes, dab a little pussy yes. juice. That's what I'm right saying. Here. That's what I'm for talking yourself. About. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> but yeah, bre- it's just very. There's just no way you could s- commercially sell breast milk because it is such a, <laughs> it's such a strange gray area of like. Let's say you homogenized it, it would still feel wrong and weird to drink breast milk. Well, it tastes all right. I mean, I'm not saying that it it's tastes. Sweet. It's, yeah, but it, the girl you, whose breast milk you drank, you were you were dating her at the time. No, no, it no? was um, it oh, was she, uh, you're just friends. She was a comedian at the. She was a comedian. Oh. My friend's wife. I was like, let me have some of that milk. Really? And she gave me a sip. I misremember this whole story. I thought it was no, a girl no, you were dating. It's kind of blown up. It's just, uh, people, people this is will, good. You know, we're setting the record. Straight, folks. This is it. This this is is it. it. <laughs> He's not. Because to me, <sighs> drinking platonic breast milk seems so <laughs> fucked up. Like, even though, even though I guess you get it from your mother, which is a whole Freudian thing. It's but to just me, milk, it's man. I don't know. What do you man. have to have a relationship with the cow? You don't. You don't. Need to <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? You All right. Drink some milk. You know what? You're right. My mistake. I was thinking of women as human beings. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that is my fault. <laughs> and, and I fucked up there. You're right. They are cows or whores for us to use, whether it be for our sexual gratification or for our, our dairy needs. <laughs> Women are interchangeable cows. That's a good point. I fucked up, Louie. I'm sorry. My point is rescinded. <laughs> Right, I'll just weigh in here. What do you? How do you feel? Would you drink platonic breast milk, <laughs> or only breast I milk would, from one you? I don't love? know. Did you like seek it out, or how did it come up? How did it come up in Cabo? Judge Eldis. <laughs> Judge Eldis. Look, if, it, if it's like you're at a dinner party or something, and it's like yeah, I just had a kid. And you guys want to try a shot of breast milk or something? Okay, I would take a little sip, but. See, just, there you go. That's what happened. I, I don't want the cup of breast milk poured just for me. <laughs> I didn't drink a whole cup. I mean, that's greedy. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The baby, the baby needed some. The there was a baby that, that needed the milk. I right. just took a little, like, a little squirt. Yeah, yeah, let me get a little bit. Yeah, I would try it. I don't know. Yeah. It's not, it's not that Like, weird. I would try a woman who I had a child with breast milk. Dude, I'm be competing with that kid. Give me that. Give me some of that milk. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, half yeah. for him, half for me. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's only fair. Yeah. I bet you if shit got dire, ooh, you think cavemen ever had babies to kill them and drink the breast milk? <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably. That's like some uh, oh, what was that? Uh, Cormac McCarthy shit. Yeah, the you road. Know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of the, the deleted chapters of the road yeah. <laughs> is drinking breast milk and and the baby's on a spit. That's yeah, in that, yeah, that's in yeah, that yeah, book. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fucked up. That book is fucked up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. To, maybe I'm the one with a hang up here. Sounds but, like it is. But, you gotta, you but gotta... I just wouldn't. Like, we have a good friend who had a kid. I don't know that I would drink her breast milk. Even if they're like, in our culture, please don't offend us. You know? <laughs> okay, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe, yeah. Maybe if I have to trick them into selling me Manhattan, I'll take a squirt. <laughs> but, but otherwise, for a couple beads. But otherwise, I think I would present, you know. I mean, I was thinking of her specifically in my head. Stop. It's you like, would drink her breast like, milk? Would I drink her breast milk? And it's like, you know. I wouldn't request it when <laughs> I wouldn't request it when I'm crashing at her house with like her fucking husband and baby like we just were. But you know, if there's like a lot of people, if it's sort of like a party, right, if it's, if a, it's fun, a party trick or it's all, something, it's not like she's like feeding the baby. I'm like, hey, give me a squirt. It was like, <laughs> right. There was, there was a it's, bottle in the fridge. It's okay? got to be cold. First of all, <laughs> if it's warm, that's fucked up. Warm my if, you, if, if it hasn't been kind of processed a little bit in a bottle in the fridge, I do not need it straight from definitely titty to mouth. No. Okay, this is interesting. Then. Titty to mouth should be someone you're involved. Titty with. to mouth yeah, should be should needs be, to be yeah. your wife yes. or whatever woman you have a child. The, yeah. the child must be yours if yes. you go titty to mouth. Yes. Warm. The child can possibly not be yours, but you must be dating her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Cold. Now we're starting to have some discussions. Anyone can but, have it. Yeah. But I still think I'm out, personally. Like, I would be pissed if somebody drank my wife's breast milk. I'll say it that. Really? I think so. Oh, it's a jealousy thing. I think, I just think it's, I just feel like this is not for you. Do you know see, what I mean? See, I feel the opposite. I feel like I don't want titty to mouth at all. Ever. I don't want any sexual aspect of it, even if well, it's someone I'm dating. Well, here's Suckle, suckling out, no. But if she, like a clown with seltzer water out of a flower. If That's she, a funny move. If she does that yeah. and you catch it, that can be your yeah, wife. Yeah, okay. I knew, <laughs> I knew a lady in Brazil, she had so many kids that she would like, she would like squirt the other kids. Like, hey, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck off, kids. You know, get him. She sounds eye. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Louis. So, what did it taste like? You said it was sweet. It was like, sweet. It was almost like a, a sweetened condensed milk, but like more less uh, mm. thick. That sounds. That sounds awesome. good. Fucking good, dude. Now, That's if you don't tell me what it is, and you're like, I have a pretty nice little dessert <laughs> beverage. <laughs> I you think can't I'd be trick fine. people into drink. You can't. That's that's worse. You can't trick someone okay. into drinking excretions. Okay, I have consent, man. What's wrong if with you? If it's a trick, then I'm. Then that's actually very. That's very uh, illustrative there because if it's not just good enough to serve without someone signing a fucking waiver, it's a little fucked up. You know what I mean? Well, I guess. I mean, it's like you'd never you have, have to check and be like, "Hey, a diabolical dinner party you're seeing," and you watch yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. eat like their, their That's true. God, and then you're like, "Do you know what you just ate?" Yeah. So like, what is, what's going on? I'm just saying, dude. I'm just trying philosophically to get to it. Maybe there is something Freudian where I have it linked. It's maternal, but then once it's your wife, then it's like you know, it's either it's either got to be the mom or your wife. 
in a very Freudian way. He's oh, maybe that is kind of crazy, actually. You know, you put it that those are the two people's milk you can drink. <laughs> that is that is crazy. I know it's fucked up, but I think it's I drink human a third psychology. Milk. I drink yeah, a third you drink milk. a third milk, dude. <laughs> there's something. There's something. I don't know. I find it. And here's the thing: if I were to even have a squirt in in a scenario where you're saying it would have to not be a close friend and it would have to be a lady, I kind of want to fuck. It would have to be like a weird flirtatious party thing, the way you're all, like what you're describing. But it couldn't be somebody that I ha- am super close with. For me, it just isn't sexual at all. I just am that's like fair. Maybe curious you're more, what it you're more like. enlightened than I am. <laughs> I, I'm taking yeah. the more scientific. I think approach. it was. I like to try everything. Okay, like, I, I, this is like food, like se- like whatever. Yeah. I want to try yeah. it. If I, I, for most things, I want to try the things in the world. Yep. So that's all it was. It wasn't necessarily sexual at the time. It was just like, whoa, it's in there. Yeah. Let me try it. Weird, right, right, know, right, right, right. It's weird. Let me try it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I like that kind of shit. That's fair. I just <laughs> feel, I just wanted to really talk this out with two scholars, <laughs> two, two modern day philosophers, <laughs> because that was, that was literally how I knew you, <laughs> was Breast Milk Louie for like a year. <laughs> that was like the main thing I had in I, my head. Dude, people still remember that shit. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I don't think, I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was like, yeah. I dressed you're, up like, a you're like, this would be a nice way to kill seven minutes on a podcast. <laughs> Meanwhile, was 10 thing. years later. Yeah, people remember. <laughs> Seriously, people, like random people that, that listen to the show. No, I know, dude, yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, we just did another 12 minutes. And this will, there. yeah. Well, this was, again, more scientific. We kind of took it away. That was the jumping off point. Yes. But this was more of an academic discussion. Yeah, we really explored Let it. us know in the comments, folks. Is it weird? Would you drink non-sex, breast milk non-sexually? Without even a hint of sexually. Most people drink breast milk non-sexually. Let's remember that. Okay, not as a child. Take not you. I'm not saying are you now a baby and do you need breast milk to survive? Stav really is just a big horny baby. I am. Dude. Totally. There's no way around it. My sippy cup. <laughs> this, is really, this is a giant version of how babies drink water. It totally is. That's hilarious. <laughs> I want some lively debates in the comments about this, though. <laughs> All right, hell yeah, dude. What are some other things you've tried that you're like some weird shit that you were like? Because you, you said you like to try anything. Was there one? Was there one? Because the breast milk was pretty good. Was there one experience where you're like, let me dabble? Where you're like, ah, uh, not for me. Something anymore. that went south. Yeah. Could be a liquid, could be just a sexual experience, could be, you know, a vac, you know, whatever. Just something adventurous where you, where were, it went, set, where were, it turned on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have anything? I mean, I like, I like, I everything is like it's even good when it's bad. Is nice. what I say. You know what I mean? It's like definitely sexual things. Because you've had your, you've had, because you, you're like. I at least experience the experience is yeah. good. If you make it out and you're not permanently fucked up, <laughs> yeah. it's all good. You know what I mean? Like no scarring. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, that this is not happening is a crazy story about falling in love with like a a semi homeless lady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recommend dating the yeah. homeless. No, but but, uh, but uh, you know, I'm. It was an experience. You know, I'm glad I, I lived through it. it that could have turned really south on me, and I'm yeah. lucky I walked away from that. So I'm yeah. saying, but. Yeah, I when you say semi homeless, you mean homeless? I mean, she didn't start off homeless, and by the end, she was. <laughs> That's so funny to be dating someone during their decline in the houselessness. Yeah, man, she had a she had a very serious uh, alcohol issue, uh, and she just kind of like lost it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it was too bad, but she was a yeah, yeah. but yeah, she was a she was great, and I don't I don't regret it because I was lo- I was lucky that I left it unscathed, and it also was like a. I mean, not to be corny, but it was a big love of my life, to be yeah, honest. Like, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. But that could have that like, could have get the <laughs> see ya, bitch. I'm going indoors. <laughs> all right, this was great and all, but I have to go take a warm bath. <laughs> I one time tried. I was this is so long ago. I was still living in Baltimore. I was going on a weird tour, actually, with our friend Benny Butt Cheeks. Our, our <laughs> Our, our uh, the other third member of our producing duo, our trio here, um, Ben O'Brien, um, directed my special. Great, great dude. Nice. Uh, I was opening for his alt comedy group probably 15 years ago at this mm-hmm. point. Is that right? Damn. Yeah. Wow. 14, 13 years ago, something like How that. How long have you been doing stand up? Since I was 19. So I'm 34, so yeah, 15 years. Okay, right. Yeah, so yeah, right yeah. when you started, basically, this is right when right. I started. It's like so. This, so it couldn't. This was probably 
Yeah, this was probably 13 years ago, pretty soon after I started. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe 12 years. I don't remember which. I did a couple tours with them. But anyway, we were going through these, you know, we're playing these hilarious, like, any DIY venue, sure. a fucking hamburger place. Uh-huh. You know, I'm getting paid. We're all touring in one SUV. How you many know. people? <sighs> like five. Every seat in the SUV was occupied. Where did you stay? Did you all stay in Just one room? crashing in fucking floors. Like, wow. sometimes in the venues. Sometimes oh, we get one room, right? This was a one hotel room situation. And I am... I'm with the whole team. And we're in this weird venue in Atlanta that had just been lacquered. It had just been painted. So the floor the church is the converted church one, that weird one. I don't remember what All it right. was. I'll, I can look it up later. But we're in this. It was like a weird art gallery. Like okay. it was fucking downtown. You know how Atlanta. Like now, you know how every downtown has been since the pandemic, where homeless people are everywhere. Yes, Atlanta has been like that forever. <laughs> yeah, right? sure. Like that's what their downtown has been mm-hmm. like. We like we were from Baltimore. You know, grew up in Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. They had been in Baltimore for like, you know, 10 years, whatever. We were like, damn, this is fucked up, right? Like, (laughs) but the little, the venue was cool. They had just painted the floor, so everybody had to put on like Home Depot booties to like just even be in there. It was Uh weird. Fumes were everywhere. Yeah, the fumes is what fumes were fucked up. Fumes were fucked up. Really fun. Ended up being a really fun show. And I hit it off with this girl. And I'm not, you know, this was. I think right after this tour, I started believing in myself, and I had a little pussy renaissance. Okay. You know, yeah, like the pussy uh, renaissance. Yeah. The pussy, this is right. This predated my pussy renaissance. That sounds like a Prince album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, <clears throat> I had fucked like you know in my life I had fucked like three women at the time. Sure. And I was like a college girlfriend, and then another weird quasi. I had no like. Again, no belief in myself, just get pussy randomly. Mm-hmm. So this, I hit it off with this girl. She's like an artist. She's hot. Um, she's weird. We're having a good time. And every, and we were sharing a, fu- everyone's sharing a fucking ho- one hotel room. Sure. We're going to have to sleep on the floor. I'm like, see you losers later. I'm getting the fuck, I'm going to get pussy with this girl. Uh-huh. I'm going to fuck her in her house. <laughs> so we're fucking hanging out and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're making out in her car. Mm-hmm. She has just like... Uh, and we're hanging out at the venue, and eventually they kick us out. And you know, I'm like, well, you know, let's go back to your place. She's like, oh no, let's get a drink. And I'm like, okay, whatever, cool. We go to her, her at, like SUV. She has booze in there, which was cool but weird. But then I'm like, she's got a lot of stuff in this car. Oh man, <laughs> she's, got, she's got quite a bit of uh, yeah, home goods oh, in this car. God, man. <laughs> Man, and, and so I'm like, all right, cool. And she's like, so then we go, you know, we go to a fucking bar and we're having a like a fun time. And she's like, let's go back to your hotel room. And I'm like, hotel room. I was like, ah, uh, like yeah, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> why don't we go to your place? And she's like, oh, I'm kind. Of, she's like, oh, I'm kind of staying with, uh, you know, my ex or something. I can't really go back there. And I'm like, uh. Uh, yeah, we can go to my hotel room. So now I'm just stalling. I don't have a hotel room. So I'm like, let's keep this let's keep this night going. Maybe I get my dick sucked in this SUV or something. We go to a fucking gay bar in Atlanta. Uh-huh. It's actually fun as shit. We're sure. ma- I'm making out and I'm grabbing a titty in the gay uh-huh. bar. Uh, they just and think I, you're a lesbian. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, look at that young queer couple. I really did, dude. I look like a but. I had the body of like a young. I was again hairless, buzz cut. I looked like a fucking like a fat twenty year old lesbian yeah. for sure, dude. They, they, that's why everyone's like, oh, they let them. This is yeah. where they belong. <laughs> oh fuck! I was wearing sweat like sweats. I fully looked like a like a gym style lesbian. Um, like a young PE teacher and uh, <laughs> and and I'm just I'm trying to make something happen right yeah. I'm trying I'm like alright let's fucking and she's like let's go to your hotel room and I'm like well, why don't we you're both looking for someone to sleep that night yeah neither of you have a place, place, a place and I'm like <laughs> ho- I'm like a homeless bitch like what are the odds that I finally am getting pussy strange pussy from a hot woman in my life and she's homeless with nowhere to go and dude I pathetically I'm like yeah, we have a... I'm like, yeah, let's go to the fucking... Yeah, my hotel's here. Um, I I think I, I was trying to book a hotel. I had no money, right, in, in my life. It was like... I, the closest hotel was like $300. Jesus. And I have no money, but yeah. I'm like, 
uh, it's worth getting okay. closer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But she sees me trying to book a hotel room online. I was lying about having a hotel room. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, we can go to my hotel. It's right down. I, I tried to book one right over there, sure. and it was sold out. I was like, actually, it's over here. Like, I'm being so not Jesus. smooth. She catches a glimpse of me booking it, and that was, she was like, what? You don't even have, she was like, you've been lying about it. I think it just oh. fucked the vibes up. Yeah. You know, when it's like, and meanwhile, it's like, Bitch, you're homeless. <laughs> you could have had a fucking place to shower. You just couldn't. We couldn't have fucked. If it was now, the lies. It was the betrayal. Now I would have obviously been able to handle this. You know, I would have just been like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, now I would it's, just have my hotel room. Sure. But. It's, it's actually awkward to book. a. I found like when I was there was a while when I was living with my folks in L.A., it's hard to make that step into we should get a hotel room because I feel like a woman and rightfully so wants to wants like a, to be able to bail at any moment like right. if she's not feeling the vibe then yeah, she should, yeah, and yeah. there's like there's kind of like a unspoken we're getting a hotel room we're gonna fuck yes and so they don't want to you know they don't they, they, no, you already have a hotel room that's exactly you know I mean? right they don't like this is like an it's the extra step solely for pussy yes is, which is like we all know that's what's happening anyway yes but when it's explicitly laid out when it becomes explicit instead of implicit exactly it's it a problem be, it's it that's kills the mood 100 true kills dude. the mood yeah she has to be like a so down to do she it, you know. To, what I mean? she yes. to be, like, and a lot of women don't even want it. They want to be able to back out any moment. Which and who the fuck am I? Yeah, it, it's yeah. like I'm some. I'm the opener to a lightly <laughs> attended alt comedy show. Who, by the way, my charms have worn off. It's been three. It's been like four hours. But we've been out all night. You're if, both trying to go to the other person's room. And if I had, one has a room, dude. If I had had a holiday, if I had a room uh -huh. right from the thing, we would have just fucked. Like we would have had a fun time. Oh yeah. I I was like, want to go back? I was like, let's watch, you know, I'm, I'm doing, let's watch some show. And she's like, we can watch that. Like, you're just doing something where you're like, oh, let's go back to my, you know, let's go back to your place and watch 30 Rock. She's like, I love 30 Rock, but let's go to your place. I was like, if I had a hotel room, I'm getting sucked off watching 30 Rock. But then I also, I just extended it far too long. Yeah, yeah, When yeah. it's like, it's literally I've, like, it's like 2 a.m. Oh, she's yeah. She's just tuckered out at this point. Dude, I've, I've been, I am I used to be so bad at, I'm, I still probably am bad at, I'm, now I have a wife, so I've clo I finally closed one deal. But like, <laughs> yes. I used to be a horrible closer. Like, yeah. I would just like keep it going forever yeah, and it wouldn't go anywhere. You ever sometimes you like... You learn, you're supposed to get to know each other on a first date. Sometimes you get to know like too much. Like, of course. I wish I could have just fucked you. But yeah. now I know what kind of a crazy, horrific <laughs> yeah, well. life you have. And this is, I can't do it now. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. I gotta go. You know, yeah, like that's yeah. happened to me. I've been, I've been, I've tried, I've gone back to places that it was too fucked up for me to mm -hmm. fuck, which like even back in the days when I was like, I'm down for whatever. Yeah, and it was yeah, still yeah. like, right, no, actually, some of them I did fuck, but it was horrible. Of you course. ever know a, a girl with, I, there's one girl with a, uh, Man, she had pet reptiles, man. Oof. That shit fucking stinks. Oh, like dude. two lizards in a studio apartment, dude. Not good. I have are you are you kidding me? You know, I have on multiple occasions <laughs> had to pretend like rats were cute like crawling on me was good. <laughs> like before I fucked on multiple cocaine. Multiple. You fucked more than one woman I have with fucked pet rats? More I have fucked at least two, maybe three. <laughs> one that's your demographic <laughs> it's not my demographic it's three out of a nice amount I, but dude, it I've was I've never fucked a single woman with pet rats well <laughs> I what can lizard, I say right, lizard, who am I as a lizard yeah, 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 as a lizard yeah, yeah, yeah. pet owner yeah. fucker. but there was something about rat where I was like and I particular like look <laughs> I'm so, so there's some rat people out there here's the thing I will still fuck up because I will say this they were pretty hot there oh. is a type of weird rat girl on the internet that oh, is yeah. hot as shit. For sure. And they're like artists. They were artists. They were like weird girls. You know what oh, I mean? I, get, I, I totally get it. I had to like, <laughs> what, a, <laughs> what a cute guy. Because my dick was hard. Yeah. I had to be like, this guy's awesome. <laughs> and then immediately I bust. I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, yeah. get, this is fucked up. Totally. But I, I was never... I. Very rarely have I ever gotten to the place and not fucked. Even yes. if things are a nightmare, and I've had some nightmare situations. Oh, I bet. Where I'm like, oh. but in my head, in my head, I never even thought about the possibility of, of not, not fucking. fucking. Well, so so the lizard one, I did fuck. I'm just breathing through my mouth. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, just, I can't like it smelled so bad dude. I was like I'm breathing my mouth and then but the one time I didn't fuck was this was um 
this is uh, I, I dated another girl in Portland, not the one from this from that mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm. and uh, she was like one of the first Suicide Girls, like oh, the OG yeah. respect models. Good and, for you, uh, man. Um, no, but it didn't end up happening. Like mm. she was, she, I was like, I'm talking to her at the date. I'm like, what are you up to today? And she's like, Oh, I've been icing down my pussy from all the fucking I've been doing. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, cool, I was writing some jokes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know how to take that. I'm like, is this right. a joke? What do you mean? Then we go back to her place. Yeah. It's like, it's like too, you know, you know, she like rents a room and there's too much stuff there. You know yes, what I mean? It's like yes, not yes, a, yes. and then, and then we're kind of making out and then I look over and I see an ice pack and I'm like, I'm out. Oh I'm out. my like, God. I gotta go. Like, yeah. I gotta, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just that. A nice pack. It's just, I don't, I don't have any, it's like, I just need, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Kind of well, with a woman. At, it's like, a similar, it's the flip side of what we were just talking about with the hotel room. It's like, it's like, it's implied this hot ass mentally ill woman with turquoise (laughs) hair is getting dick down. But now that it's been made explicitly clear, she got dick down to the point where she's treating her pussy like it's LeBron James' knees after the finals. You're like, you know what? I'm out. I know you're getting fucked, but when you've made it clear, and it's like, it's just the flip side. It's also For women, it's like safety. Mm -hmm. For men, it's like, I don't know. It's too Not feeling cucked. Well, no, it's not even- Pre-cucked almost. I I don't even think it's the macho thing. It's like just straight up a cleanliness. Like it's, it's actually- literally like a hotel room like a hotel room is for strange people to fuck in <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I want to yeah. go in there and have no evidence that anyone's right. ever fucked in right, there and right, if there's right. a slight bit of evidence I'm out right. I'm skeeved out and right, I gotta go right, like right. I was in Brazil for the World Cup Yeah, and I'm like thinking like man maybe I'll go to a whorehouse sure. and then there was just a line down the block outside the, line the whorehouse. Is tough, and dude. I'm like, no. The line is tough, I'm out, dude. dude. I'm you out. do not want to see the. Dude, imagine looking at the guy in front. The guy yeah. who's right in front of you. Yeah. You know he just fucked the girl you're about to yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't do it. That's brutal. Yeah. The, the line. Yeah. The, it was like, it kind of, because I've been to Brazil a few times. I, I, I lived there for a year, and it was like, oh. it kind of ruined the vibe, the World Cup there, because it's just, it's bros. Yeah. It brings it brings like the ratio is all fucked up in the uh, whole town. It's just all dudes, and it's all fucking soccer hooligans. Yeah, dude, just it's, toothless British guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> give me some pussy, love. <laughs> just that fucking guy spitting fish and chips. It's all that shit. Crazy Argentinians. It's all yeah, that shit. It's yeah, like not. Yeah. A, it's not a good. Uh, yeah. Plus Brazil vibe. and Germany. You, just, you got those weird Nazis that live in Argentina. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brazil. I mean, my friends were rooting for Germany. I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry, I cannot. Root not for in Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> Definitely not in Brazil. You can't root for Germans in Brazil. A couple of fucking the ones that got away might are right around the corner, dude. I dude, I saw a TikTok about like that was like um it was like it was like a fun facts TikTok and mm-hmm. it's like fun fact. There's a there's a community of Ger- of German speaking uh ethnic Germans in Brazil that's completely German. And it's like that is one of the least fun facts possible. You are just, that's just Nazis. It is purely the descendants of Nazis. They're not just Nazis. They were there before that. I swear that. Have you ever, I swear seriously. I've, no, I've studied this shit. I, look, you think I want to, yes. I know when there's Nazis. There's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know, this is a really funny fact. You ever Google this? Do you know that before like Adolf Hitler was the name of evil? Yeah. It's just a popular name. Yeah. So or the last wow. name, even the last last name Hitler. Right. So there's all these Hitlers in American history, and dude, you look up their names, it sounds like an SNL sketch. Yeah, yeah. There's George Washington Hitler. <laughs> dude, there's I'm not. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> That's just, fucking dude, awesome. There's gay Hitler. That's his name. Gay you know, Hitler. gay used to be a name. Yes, his gay. Name is gay yes, Hitler, and there's yes. a guy who's gay Hitler That's out there. You know, awesome, right? <laughs> Shout out to gay Hitler. Yeah, this is this is a historical fact. Yeah, like, there yeah, used to be yeah. bridges called the Hitler Bridge. Yeah, and people are like, yeah, all right, yeah. we got to dig down the Hitler oh, Bridge. It, you're right because it's just a German. It's name. just a German name. Yeah, yeah. a common yeah, German name. It's crazy. Yeah. So those Germans were there before World War Two. Yeah, people were were, people immigrated. You know, there's lots of there was a German community in America. You know, when World War Two broke out, somehow they didn't end up in camps. I don't know why. But. Yeah, I'm just saying <laughs> there was probably a nice little influx in 1940, in yes. the 19, late 1940s, yes. to those German communities. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Dude, that X-Men where the Magnetos go into the, gets the, the Nazis in Argentina, he yeah, gets their, yeah, takes yeah. their fucking feelings that's out. That's fucking awesome. Ooh, fuck, I love that shit. That was a fucking sick act. That's the coolest, that's the thing, it's like Magneto 
how can you not root for the guy? Yeah. He's like, he's a fucking, he's a Holocaust survivor that just owns Nazis. And it's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, he's pretty dope. And I like that better than the Bear Jew, actually. I thought that was yeah, more, that yeah, was like yeah. a cooler <laughs> yeah, revenge yeah. fantasy yes, for me yes, personally. Yes. Yeah, because that's like, yeah, I mean, Tarantino's like historic, like, historic revisionist history is very interesting. Yeah. He's, a, he's a super interesting filmmaker. I mean, it is that, pl and then that was one thing with the, you know, Inglorious Bastards, great, you know, great movie, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then it's like the, when, with the whole, the Tate murders, just kind yeah. of reimagining them is, it's just an interesting move. It's and really, even, it's even Django, trip. it's like, it's revenge. It's like, yeah, historical, like, you know, this guy got the better of the yeah. He kind of makes the owners. lets the victims kind of win in a kind of a way. Like, yeah. dude, that I I actually um once upon a, what's what's it called? Once yeah, upon once upon a time, time in Hollywood. Hollywood. Like, I liked it, but even at the end, I was like, wow, this is like this is super violent. My mom saw it. She's like, I thought it was great. Like she like yeah. she's like they fucking got what was coming to them. Yeah, she, yeah, like, yeah. She was into it. I That's guess maybe so she was around it. It was crazy. You know that movie? She um. He was so accurate with like all the commercials. She recognized the radio jingles because she's from Southern California wow. from that time. Like she totally like he did it that accurately. And your mom was anti hippie, or she was anti Manson. She was, she was family? anti Manson family, and she was like because it was given a bad name yes. to hippies. I don't think she picked up the. Uh, there's like a weird political thing in there where it's almost like the conservatives are the good guys. I think a little a bit, little bit. In, it's in kind of, but time. that's the thing. That's why it's. I'd have to watch it again because I just watch the first time I like to just watch a movie sure. to enjoy it and mm -hmm. not think about anything. Yeah, just yeah, be sure. like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. This is cool. And then, you know, and I haven't given it a rewatch because I also like it was like a, you know, when you watch a movie and it's like a really, it was just a perfect day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you're Hell like, yeah. it was like a great day with, you know, so I was dating somebody at the time and it's like this weird that's one of the good days in that relationship. Yeah. So like revisiting that, you bring your own shit to a movie like that, where it's yeah. like, damn, I might just be sad yeah. watching this awesome movie because I'm yeah. like, what have I squandered? You know what I mean? Like the other flip side is like, or on a bad day, I'm like, four. We had like five actually good days in that relationship. One yeah, that sure. was one of them. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I do want. Yeah, there is the thing of like, yes, Leo's character theoretically is. Like, he is the uh, avatar for, like, the conservative part of Hollywood that was going away. Yeah. And, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to say with that, because Tarantino isn't that, you know, that's those aren't his values, you, you I don't, don't think. I don't even think that's a, it doesn't matter. He I think he just it, loves, like, the movies. Yeah. You well, know he what keeps I mean? It, yeah, and he keeps it kind of ambiguous in a way. Yeah. I'm not saying he's saying that that's better. He's just saying, here's a version where that side kind of wins. It's like, it's just that old, that old timey, we're still the heroes, even though right. at the time, counterculture was saying, fuck these old time dudes. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. passe. Right, you know? right, right, right. I think that's all he, I don't think he's saying that this is better. It's just saying like, it didn't turn out that way. What if it did? And it also, it's better. Or also worse. one win. It's kind of like Django where it's like one win in that yeah. context doesn't change. Yeah. Like, and Glorious in, Bash is the it, weird one. It is a win. It's a full on win. Like, and Glorious Bash yeah. is like, no, no, no. We <laughs> yeah. flipped everything. Yeah. And, you know, that's the only one. But those two are kind of like these pockets in time where it's like these characters that I love get to win. You know? Yes. Anyway, who no, knows? I, I love that stuff. And I thought, you know what I think is, I, I don't know if people uh, put it in the same category, but I think. Uh, Grand Budapest Hotel is also. I know people hate Wes Anderson. I don't hate him, but I think I, that, think, I think that the hating Wes Anderson is hack at this point. Thank where you. It's That's like, what I think. It's like the guy just does something. You can't argue that there's no that there is an artistry in what he yes, does, except for that last one, which really sucked. I'm, I actually I'm mad I paid really for it. wasn't that good. So I, I haven't I, seen I, it yet. I had a huge argument with my friend where I def, I was defending him, mm. and then I was saw the movie and I was like, damn, like I can't believe really? what did I do? Uh, well, even know. even here's the thing. Whatever, even anyone still, can have a one bad one. You know, and whatever. even if it's a bad one, at least he's doing something. Yeah, man. He has a vision. He has a way he likes to do things. It is more interesting when a filmmaker has a singular voice instead of like things being completely homogenized and like everything's on a fucking green screen and yeah. it's like everything's a fucking Marvel movie yeah. or it's trying to be a Marvel movie, right? Sure. So like I just, it's like it's like with the NBA where it's like the league kind of gets a little boring and I think it's better now but in the heart of like the Warriors slash, I don't know if you're a big hoops guy but it's like everything became threes or layups. Like yeah. everyone was playing basketball like on a basically... A mathematical equation mm -hmm. and it's more fun when there's teams that play different ways yeah totally. that have like five when there's teams that 
that do fun, you know, weird things. Huge teams, what? small teams. I mean, I think that three with, point shooter, you with know, whatever. comedy is that like I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I work the cellar a lot. <coughs> I love the cellar. Yeah. But still, I go there and it, it feels a little bit like a comedy factory. There's all these different rooms. Yeah. And I feel like I don't know. Everyone, everyone's totally. starting to sound the same, and I miss like. There's, you know, Pat Bursher. Have you seen him around? I don't know. He's a new comic. It's just like I miss like weird totally. comics who are just like not trying to break down some kind of crazy oh, philosophical dude. thing. I just want to hear, hear like I weirdos am, doing saying like crazy shit that I never could have thought of myself. It's, you know? it's really fucked up. That exactly. You're. I think you're really right about that. Where it's like things have become a little too homogenized in comedy, and I think we're getting to the point where you maybe we're seeing a little bit of like different styles almost where it's like regional like you know uh clearly the like the austin comics they have their own thing going there right mm -hmm. where it's like i liked i went to i went to the mothership great great club mm -hmm. and by the way i like that the crowd is different than you'll get here right mm -hmm. i was doing jokes shitting on elon <laughs> musk and shitting on shit that those people love and it was fun you do those jokes in brooklyn everybody sucks your dick yeah even if it's not funny to make those jokes work in a club where they don't agree with you, yes. I like that that exists, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. I even like going to like, or the the flip side of it, it's like, you know, you obviously know San Francisco, right? Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, that's where I started, like yeah. That's where you started, and it's like, and so I I like going there because it's like, yeah, people people complain when, somebody, when things are like too PC or whatever, or like the audience is touchy, but it's like, that's a different place for you to get better that's and true. do be different. Yeah. Offend people. You're supposed to offend people and still make them laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree. My, one of my favorite comedians of all time is Patrice O'Neill. Mm -hmm. I do not agree <laughs> with half the shit he says, yeah, yeah. but I'm laughing my dick off at his interesting, funny yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. Well, people, I, that's the weird thing about uh, all this stuff is that, like, I'm excited kind of when I'm offended. I yeah, still get offended. Totally. I'm like, wow, I'm offended. Like, yeah. this is exciting. Yeah, like, yeah, I haven't yeah. felt like, oh, like, I, yeah. you shouldn't be saying this. And that's me as a comedian. Right, like, I don't right. know if you're saying ah, this. Dude, and come I love on. that feeling. And then you you're know? laughing. Yeah, yeah. I like not being, as long as I'm not offended by how shitty and lazy the comedy is. Yes. Some people, sh and at the end of the day, it should just be f like, just be funny. Yes. yes and original. Yes, yes. Funny. And original. Funny that's is it. number yes, one. Exactly. That's original it. and the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost in that. I could maybe flip original and the truth. On it, depending on the kind of comic you are, but like that's the three things. I think funny and original. I think the truth is a separate thing. I think it yeah. has to be funny and original. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. they're like almost on the if same. If you're thing, striving you know for I mean? the highest levels, for I mean, sure. like funny and unoriginal is a hack. That's True. what it that's is. A good you know point. what I mean? That's a good point. <laughs> that is that's what a it good is, point. You know? That's a good point. So it has to be funny and original, and then the best is when it's the truth. Yeah. But it's, sometimes it's fucking it's Rodney. Rodney isn't the truth. Rodney's yeah. fucking. Yeah. You know, exactly. He, he, exactly. Got, he got some respect. But there I don't is, know, here's you know. the thing. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> here's the thing though. There is a truth to a guy who f you could tell the way that guy feels, and there is like sometimes you could tell what the joke jokey joke guys are like. I've I've used this metaphor before, but almost through echolocation, where it's like their jokes, their jokes aren't telling you anything, but what they're joking about, their manner, the like, oh no, 100%. you can kind of put together. You know who Ronnie Dangerfield is? Yeah, the best, the best one-liner comics. They are a character, but the character has depth. It's a three-dimensional character, like not just Rodney, but the more modern examples are like um, Attell or Hedberg. Yeah, yeah where like yeah. this is you get the whole character that absolutely, they're being up there. Yeah, absolutely, but they're not just they're, they're they're just short jokes. You know what I yeah. mean? The jokes are funny on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's they're a whole person. You know, totally, totally. Um, anyway, I don't, we we like to not talk explicitly about comedy because oh. that shit's boring on the podcast. Oh, my bad. No, 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 it's not. No, I got into it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but a little piece of it's always fun. Yeah. But there is nothing worse than a fucking podcast where it's like people are talking about the business for an hour. Well, actually, that's you know why. I mean? That's why I don't. I hang out with a lot of not comedians because I, I'm, I get tired of talking about <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. comedy shit. I'll talk. Dude. The fucked up thing is, I will talk once these cameras are off. I'll talk about this with you for a <laughs> fucked up long time because yeah. I love thinking about it and talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, but. Yeah. I do want to talk. We got to fucking do questions, but you got to come back because there's so much shit I don't, I haven't, I wanted to ask you about that I, I haven't been able to. Dude, I love this. is This is good. This was a good vibe, yeah, I think. Yeah, super yeah. fun. No, I want to talk about, you know, at some point, because San Francisco is very interesting to me, that whole scene is because if people don't know, you, I mean, um, like I came up in DC at a time where I think there were a lot of really good comics that helped me become a good comic. You came up in a crazy. In a really cool, there's a lot of great comics in San yeah, Francisco. Was, well, I thought, I was like, man, our class is incredible. We're the best out there. And then I didn't know what was going on in Chicago at the time. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. well, all right. No, <laughs> you, guys had, you guys had great comics. It's but dope. It's like, it's me, it's Shang Wang, Brent Weinbach, 
Uh, some people that aren't doing anymore that were dope. Jasper Red, totally. Moshe Kasher, um, uh, Ryan Stout, <coughs> uh, um, Ali Wong. Yeah, you know, yeah, basically. Yeah. So it's it was a it was a class. It was a yeah, strong class. You that's know, cool. Chris Garcia, Kevin Kami, all kinds of hilarious comics out of there. But yeah, then I then, but then that Chicago scene was just kind of like I was like, oh man, these are the real those are the, I mean those are like huge. They're stars. doing, but you know whatever. Um, <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, fuck them, <laughs> fuck them. It just some people get lucky, some people don't. That's how it goes. Um, but the, and then more importantly, I would love to ask you more about the prostitution in Brazil and uh, living there for a year. You living there for a year is so funny. Yeah, like that's a- one of the most like. <laughs> That's one of the most, like, I'm going to be a sex criminal. <laughs> I'm taking a little set. Like, you know how people go backpacking? I'm going whoring across Brazil Dude, for I a wish year. I got a girlfriend there within two months, oh. and I was just with her. It's like, huge mistake. I've made mistakes in love all the time. I'm always falling in love and sticking yeah. around with someone. It's, yeah. a, it's a mistake. I mean, not, except now with my wife, who I love. Yes, but, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it was like, definitely when I was younger, I think you're just always, like, kind of, like, trained by however you were raised my parents are still together and it's weird i have this crew of friends that's still friends that we've known since like junior high we're, and almost all of us our parents are still together which is yeah, weird right yeah, like, like yeah. most people go through divorce and stuff like that but i think it doesn't it teaches you to stay with somebody it doesn't teach you how to choose that somebody right. you know what oh, i mean because you're not around for that shit yeah you're yeah, just yeah. around for the you stick this out right, right and so right. all of my friends are like the pattern is staying in like long-term relationships that's interesting that they should have gotten out of earlier you know that's very interesting because i everyone i knew in greek town all the like immigrants either got divorced or should have gotten divorced and were in relationships that were long and loveless and all of us are scared to be, That's are scared to be in fucking, we, like, we haven't, yeah. It, it didn't teach me to stick. Oh, that's interesting. No, it did the opposite because it was bad. So it okay, teaches you to okay. be scared of him. I You're see, like, I, see. I can't be in this. Right, I, it's going right, to be bad. Right. It's okay, going to okay, be bad. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Fully, fully. Louis, that's all well and good, but I want to tell you about one of my favorite products in the world. One of my favorite brands in the world. It's Helix Sleep. That's right, my friend. Helix Sleep. I love this. I just got a Helix mattress. I am so pumped for it. Legitimately, the they are a sponsor. They do support the show. But I have not slept better. I can't tell you how what an upgrade it is over my last mattress. I got the... I mean, I'm sleeping like a baby. Eldest, you have one. I do have one, yeah. How long did you have your old dog shit mattress for? <laughs> Since I lived this here. This lumpy so, so like, piece seven of garbage. Seven years or something. This guy was coming in hunched over, back problems. Helix... <laughs> here's how beautiful people Helix are. They hooked me up. They hooked Eldis up. They hooked Benny Buttcheeks, former guest and our creative producer. They hooked him up. The whole team got Helixes because they knew we would love the mattress. We would love the mattress so much that our ad reads would read so genuine. I'm tell. I love these mattresses so much. And you know why they have been so helpful? Because they have. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly what you want to get from a mattress. And Louis, I know you. You agree with me here. They have this. They have a quiz, right? where you talk about your preferences, you talk about your body type, all this kind of stuff, and they tell you exactly the mattress you need. Now, me and Eldis, we probably only really needed to answer one question because we both got the Helix Plus for the plus size community. They, they probably didn't need to hear stomach sleep or back. They just needed the weight entered, and they knew what mattress me and my friend Eldis here needed, but... And let me say, we did need it, and sleeping on a mattress specifically for my body has truly, I'm not kidding, my back pain is better, I'm more refreshed, I love the mattress so much, I cannot, I cannot, like, truly I cannot uh, suggest it enough for you, it's a fully endorsed product with a smile on my face, look, sometimes I take the money, Okay, and I read whatever they tell me. This is not one of those times, folks. I love this mattress so much. And the nice thing is, uh, so convenient, in a box delivered straight to your door, you cut that bitch open, it puffs up into a luxurious mattress, you put it on a nice frame, you're sleeping like a king. And the good news is Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners right now. Go to helixsleep.com slash Stavi and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix Sleep, better sleep starts now. Be like me and Eldis. Snooze on one of those beautiful Helix Sleeps. <sighs> you know, and I'm, I'm so well rested. Louis, and I don't know about you, man, but you don't strike me as a guy with a particularly clean asshole. 
You know what could help you fix that? Tushy. That's right. Truly, these ad reads are two, two products that I have been getting my money's worth from, folks. Tush, let me say, let me tell you this. That bidet is working overtime over here. Tushy, I'm sure they have, uh, you know, they probably have relationships with other, other podcasts, other, you know, other celebrities, whatever. These poor, the two bidets that got sent to me and Eldis, they got the. They got the, the short end of the stick, I'll tell you that much, because we are putting in work. I have never felt cleaner, folks, okay? I, I, I was smiling ear to ear when I installed, when, well, Eldis helped me install the tush. You know, we got, the, uh, we got Albanian handiwork here. We had an unboxing. Easy, I actually didn't need him to do my menial labor. I could have figured it out myself, but it was because it was so easy to put together. It goes right onto your right onto your toilet seat. You connect it to the water right there. Easy as pie. It, it, you can adjust the angle. You can wash your cheeks if you're a lady. You can wash your, you know, your your. You can get that puss cleaned up real nice, like you know. Get the angle right. Warm it up. You know what I mean. You get the temperature going nice. It's like it's like. It's really like your toilet is licking your ass clean. <laughs> Feels like a big dog. <laughs> a big shit-eating dog is making... <laughs> and, and I'll say this. I hurt my right hand in the gym, getting back in there. I'm trying to get jacked. And I had... I was, you know, does it help that I'm fat as shit? And I had a hurt hand, fat as shit, was... Having a couple difficulties wiping my ass clean. But with Tushy, that water took care of it, baby. Spritzed me down, hosed me up. I feel like a new man every time I take a shit with my Tushy bidet. And you will feel the same way. You'll be a new man, new woman with this beautiful bidet. Take care of yourself from the bottom up this holiday season. Visit hellotushy.com forward slash Stavi and use promo code Stavi, S-T-A-V-V-Y, for 10% off your first order. Don't miss out on their Spend and Get event going on now through November 18th. That's hellotushy.com slash Stavi. Yeah. 100%, which is, uh, but good for you for conquering that. And getting a wife, dude. Yeah, hey, she's a great lady. Fingers crossed that it lasts, right, guys? <laughs> when, when, is this, when is this coming out? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. We got to take a look at the schedule. Hopefully, you're still together. Um, I'll just play some calls for us, baby. Let's let's answer some fucking questions here. I've always wanted to do this. So, baby. So baby. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Scotty, baby? Elvis. <clears throat> he says, uh, one of you fans from Philadelphia. I'm going to leave my name out for obvious reasons uh, here in a second. Uh, I took a trip this weekend, um, and it was uh, for a wedding. So we had a bunch of uh, responsible adults acting irresponsibly. Mm. Uh, I'm a single dad, 40 years old. Nice. And I uh, ended up meeting a mom who was 40 years old on the trip as well. Only thing is, she's not single. Um, oh. Not asking for advice on permission or the right thing to do here. Uh, I guess I'm more so looking to ask questions nice. about why does this keep fucking happening to me, man? <laughs> Every time I'm single, somebody's wife, girlfriend, they want to hang out with me, they want to spend the day with me. We end up kind of like pseudo falling in love for the afternoon and then that. Uh, it uh, nothing brutal. happened. Everything stayed above board with respect to uh, you know shit she's got going on. Although I do acknowledge that I did pick the choice to uh, spend a little bit of extracurricular time with this person who I knew was married and who has kids. Uh, any advice, ideas, uh, thoughts on maybe friends that might have had a similar situation? Why the fuck do I only attract married women? Thanks, y'all. Bye. Wow, it's fucking bizarre. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, buddy, you hung out with her. What the fuck are you talking about? You, to attract somebody, like what you're okay. There might I don't even I don't even necessarily buy that he only attracts married women. Um, but let's say that's let's say that's the case. It's your choice what you ex, what you like choose to pursue. Well, he doesn't know. Maybe they're hanging out, and but at the end he finds out. You know what he, I mean? But he I don't know. He says he. He says he knew here, didn't he? 
I think yeah. he. I thought I thought they were hanging out all day, and then she's like, "By the way, I'm married." Right? That's the way I pictured it, and I'm like a movie kind of thing. Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe he knew it from the it top. May have, it may have been somewhere in between where yeah. they it's hit a it off at dinner, but, you know. But it's a fucking wedding. Everybody, Somebody knows this woman. Somebody's going to go up and be like, oh, yeah, hey, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you know she's fucking married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, there's ways. By the way, at a wedding, right? And we've all been to a wedding. Mm-hmm. And as a, I don't know if you, like, when you're single, there's a way to get information. Because you're, <laughs> yes. you're usually at the wedding with... It's your friend's wedding, or if, or you're the friend of somebody who knows everyone. Dude, they should print out like a dossier for they single really people. They really should. Like, These are the single people. <laughs> here's yes. what their here's yes. what their deal yes. is. You know exactly. What I mean? like, Who's available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, you know, whatever. <laughs> like I've been at a wedding and I've seen somebody, mm. and I will go to whoever whoever is my source of information. Yes. And I'll be like, "What's her deal?" Yes. Always. You don't like. That's a good point. You know what I mean? And That's like, a good point. Or even especially. Especially after you have a little chat with someone. Because this is the other thing about weddings. People are kind of flirty, right? Yes. People are having a good time. There's vibes. There's vibes. It's also is safe, right? This woman knew she wasn't going to fuck this guy. She said maybe having a good time. You know what I mean? Like, maybe there's like, it's like, you know, it's it's like, I can't tell you how many women have basically flirted with me in front of yeah. their, like, husband. Because it's like this, weddings are like a weird, where it's like, everyone is kind of happy. Everyone's got, there's like love in the air. But it is wholesome, right? Like, yeah. T- it's like ultimately it's wholesome until you push it over the edge, and then it becomes, you know, it can be kind of wild. But it's like, I-, I just think it's like, if you're, are you at a, pos- are you at a place where fucking married women constantly? Are? I guess this is just about this wedding. We're not talking about it, the larger. Well, point he does say it keeps life. happening to him. I think it's partially because he's a. Uh strangely uh dating women his age i think that's uh, <laughs> and that's the mistake you know uh, <laughs> if he went a little younger this would yeah, not be an this issue this wouldn't be an issue <laughs> um and also look i don't know he's a single dad right he's yeah. 40 um he probably gives off kind of a safe nurturing yes. energy totally right which is like so th- they know he's kind of responsible it's also to a certain to certain women that is attractive, yeah. Especially if you're the kind of woman who's with a fucking dickhead that doesn't pull his own weight, yeah. You're like, oh, this is nice talking to a guy who, his he's making his life work without a woman at all. Not oh, only yeah, he yeah. he's like it's almost like this fantasy of like if I'm gonna it's like I feel like if women are gonna cheat they go either with a complete dirtbag who's just trying to who's just <sighs> bad for them and is gonna fulfill sexual fantasies mm-hmm. or it's like. Like a nice, you know, dad Safety, who's like yeah. kind of wholesome, but also he he probably you know he could probably let you have it sexually if push came to shove. You know, it's hard. It's 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 actually hard to decide this without seeing him. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm. why does this always happen to me? It's like I don't know. Like he's got a huge cock. You can see it in his pants. Yeah, like, I don't yeah, know. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's true. It's true because if you're also just because this also could be a little bit of like if you're. I don't know. Because he talks about, like, he says nothing happened with this woman. Do things happen with other women? Like, do women cheat with him? Or does he get into these weird friendships where he's allowing himself to kind of be almost, again, it's almost like when you're a fat teen, as I was, Mm -hmm. and I didn't have the guts to make a move, Mm -hmm. like, I would end up being, like, an emotional support when all I want to do was like date this girl, oh, like yeah. is he kind of like, is, is he sort of, if he's not fucking any of these women, he's what he's talking about is like, he's like the married gay women friend. befriend him and yes. kind of put him in the weird, yeah, straight gay friend yeah. friend zone, whatever yes, you want to yes, call yes. it. If you're not fucking them, then this, then what you need to do is stand up for yourself and not put yourself in these positions. Um, and it's also because like, if that's what's happening, if you're not fucking this woman then married women and like by being a 40 year old single father you kind of have become like a fat teen all over again you like (laughs) you know what i mean where it's like it's like you don't believe in yourself or you're wholesome basically where it's like this guy's not gonna go fuck around he's not gonna go treat women badly i think there's i mean i haven't been in the situation but i imagine in the 40s there's a divorcee community sure who is Freaky as hell. 
Absolutely. I think they've, they're fucking like crazy. Do but you know he's what I mean? not so, that guy. Yeah, you're right. He's not. That's what I'm he's saying. trying to be good. You're right. That's you're what right. I'm saying. If this is a different, like, if, and now that's how I'm reading this, right? If there's more information here and he's like, oh, no, I've been cucking. <laughs> I've been I've been cucking insurance salesmen left and right. That's different. Now, wh- but you're kind of onto something about the dating younger, because I yeah. do think his qualities are like the like forty year like a forty year old single father who's very responsible. There is like a there's a zaddy vibe there. There's totally. a there's a literal like daddy. There's a liter- He's a literal daddy. Yes, you yes. know what I mean. Yeah. I mean so, not even that much young. I'm not usually I say don't date younger, but yeah. I'm just saying if he's running into this problem of cheating on their husband, yeah. maybe that's the mid thirties. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mid thirties you yeah, is yeah. a sweet spot, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, dude. What, I, what do you think about cheating in general? Like, do you just what's your rule? What's my rule? With like, if you find a woman and she has, you find out she has a guy, you're out? Or are you in? Or what? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, really? I, well, like Israel, it's a complicated <laughs> matter. This is, where I, this is where I start talking bullshit. Oh, there's so, mu- there's so many ways to look at it. I know I'm doing something wrong, but I don't give a fuck. It's really what it comes down to. Let's just say I'm shelling that guy. I'm using white phosphorus on that guy's <laughs> wife's face with, with no bra. No matter what the UN says, <laughs> I'm letting it go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have matured. Lit is just so funny. I was just literally thinking about this like this week, where I was like, because my policy has always been like, ah, it's not, it's it not your my fault. Fuck. She's the one. She's doing fucking. The wrong shit. Thing, right? What the fuck do yeah, I yeah. care? Uh, but I do think recently I've been like, yeah, that is fucked up. But it, it's also it is also. I do think murdered, it's a case man. by case thing. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a way to get murdered. Yeah, probably is, a, is, is to is to fuck someone no, else's wife. Now there is a self preservation aspect yes. for sure. <laughs> but it's like, look, if the guy, if I'm not worried about the guy, and he's it, the other thing is like, who is this guy? Is he a piece of shit? Is this bitch a piece of shit? It's like, do I have feelings for this person? Right? Like, sure. Um, you ever been involved with someone who was in a relationship, like an affair? No, dude. I've I've been in a nice little string of like. Girls with open relationships. Where oh, it's like, really? It's almost like the above board, like... Wow. Which is kind of nice. We've kind of taken... We've taken... A, it's gone from being dangerous to being like, like, well, nice to see you. Can I get some head, please? And then it's like... Uh, uh, are, you, well, are you talking to her, her, her boyfriend? Or? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, Wait, I dude, have met a couple. I have... Dude, it's been a little... Str- like, it is weird to shake someone's hand and been like, I was demolishing your girlfriend That's yesterday. Why, so... And we're both like, nice to meet you, man. You know what I mean? And it's like, you just know. You have no. Exactly. And women don't understand. I think women don't understand that weird masculine feeling. And I'm, I'm trying not to, you know, get yeah. rid of all that macho shit. But it, it's in me. Like, I, my ex was with so many other comedians. Oof. And she told me all of them. Uh, and she doesn't know that, like, every time I'm seeing them, they are thinking, <laughs> I fucked his girl. Yeah. And, like, I know they're thinking that. <laughs> And I'm thinking they fucked my girl. And we're both thinking we at each other. You know what I mean? And it's awkward, yeah, dude. Absolutely. It's like, it's like I, I'm not saying like... No, you're so right because I don't... Listen, body count does not matter to me. No, me My neither. wife can fuck a thousand people. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. But it's a thing of like... I don't want it. I don't want her to have fucked one thousand people I see every day. That you was know? my life. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> that was my life. That's dude. tough. That's t- that is like yeah. Which some people would argue, you guys are you guys are are we are being misogynist in a more modern. We're halfway there. It doesn't even. even but matter I just, if it's right or wrong. I just. It's I just a feeling. That's dude. exactly <laughs> right. Like, that's exactly how I'm saying. like yeah. It's but also then, like it's just like. Just don't it's not tell a worst me, thing. dude. It's just not don't a, tell yeah. me about it. Right, right. I would right. never have known. The thing is, none of those guys ever said a word to me. Sure. I just knew they because just, she fucking told me. They were just smiling when they said hello to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh hi, Louie. Good to see you. <laughs> You're like, hmm, that guy's being a little strange. <laughs> anyway. I, mean, that's, yeah. I would have rather not known. That's all yeah. just like just don't tell me. It's like fine. Like I don't yeah. have a problem with that, but just don't tell me. Um it, okay, so let's get let's get to let's see if we can do anything for this guy. Um, what was his final question, Eldis? Like, how does he know? What is, you know, how, why the why fuck do I, do I only trust, trust Morgan? Yeah, why does that keep happening? Yeah, man, I mean, I think it is a little bit of, you clearly are putting out something. 
Yeah. I think there might be a little bit of that safety thing. I think there might be a little bit of what we described of the like, you're a good guy. You have a kind, you're kind, you, you know who you are? You're the guy in every Hallmark movie when she comes, <laughs> when she comes home from her high powered fucking job on Wall Street. You're the guy in Carhartt who's just raising his daughter <laughs> and who's, you know, lives a, sim like you are a kind of a fantasy to these women, I yes. think. Yeah. And so you just have to. Don't allow yourself to get it. And even saying pseudo falling in love for the afternoon, part of this is you so want to be in a relationship. You, you get, I can feel it from this. And that's why it's like, that's why I'm saying it reminds me of being a fat 13 year old because I was so yes. lonely. I so wanted a girlfriend, but I just yes. didn't know how to go about it. And his, his, that's his challenges are obviously different than not believing in yourself, but you do have to kind of set a boundary and like, not entertain these kinds of stuff, right? You don't want to be a guy who cheats, great. Then you don't, these women, you don't have time for these women. Only give your time to somebody who is not married, find that out, and it is a little bit of, there is a little work that comes to this, I think. There is a little bit of like, finding the right woman who fits into your life as a single father already is going to be a little harder. Maybe the women that fall into your lap are all married, but you got to stop entertaining that and you got to start looking if that's if you really do want a relationship, which it sounds like you do, yeah, you got to start looking elsewhere. I think, or you have to know that somebody's explicitly divorced. The good news is he is a catch. He's putting something out there, mm -hmm. and it's really just reshifting your focus. I think that that is what the problem is here. It's, there's also there's that early question, which is the perfect flirty <coughs> question: is Hey, where's your boyfriend? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, What's your sure. husband doing right now? Yeah, that, they, they know you, what you mean. You know, and they then know, you, they yeah. either do or you don't. And then it's on them. Yeah, you know whatever. And then you know what's up. So just ask that question early on, so you don't get like halfway involved mm -hmm. before that. And it's a, it's a good. You know what I mean? How that's a good it's, flirty. It's a good question, flirt move because because you know I mean? yeah. that's like another thing is like your intentions are very clear. Yeah. When yes. you're when you ask that kind of question, do you think it's a sleazy line? I don't think so. I think it's like. It depends how you say it. Like, it depends on it depends on delivery. You know, yeah, yeah, it does. Where's your boyfriend, little girl? <laughs> <laughs> they let a, they let the head cheerleader out here by herself. <laughs> um, good luck, buddy. I'm sorry that it keeps happening to you. All right, LD. What else you got for us? Hi, Stavi, Eldis, and guests. I think I went way the fuck over last time, so let's get back for it. Okay. Basically, I go to this STI, STD clinic, like, super often, super nice, super convenient. I go there recently. I go, like, once every month or once every other month. I go there. The guy, like, immediately we give each other this look when he, like, comes up to get me and, like, to do the test. Okay. He compliments my outfit, cause, like, was like, oh, my God, we're wearing, like, the same thing. When we're in there, we are talking about where we're from. We're talking about what we want to do. Like, we, it just feels like I'm on a first date. At this place, they do fingerprints instead of, like, pulling a whole vial of, like, everything because they want to make sure that there's not as much biohazard. My blood sprays all over his face, oh which is, like, God. never happens at this clinic. He was, like, kind of shook about it, but he's, like, wiped off his face and was, like, laughing. And, like, we were just talking. Even though I want to say he probably should, like, sanitize his face. <laughs> but, anyways, we're getting along super fucking well. I end up leaving. He writes his name on one of the cards and says, like, call if you have any questions. He can't hit on me. He's at work. I didn't hit on him because he's at work. I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I did not see a ring. Some of my friends, I can't stop thinking about him. Some of my friends are saying that I should call and ask to talk to him and then ask about that way. I'm a little bit worried about that because I don't want to feel awkward going into this clinic because I really like this place, right? So I don't know what the fuck to do. One of the crazy things I was vaguely thinking is I did tell him that I do porn because they asked a question about if you've ever traded sex for money. So I said, yes, do a pro porn. What if I leave a review under my sex work, Dave, and then he'll recognize the face? I don't know. Oh, I don't know what on, to do. So y'all can give me any... I probably was not detailed <coughs> enough. I don't know, but... Love you don't think you were detailed enough? <laughs> 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 um... First of all, this girl sounds awesome. <laughs> These are the kind of people I want in my life. Um, wow. This is, this. there's nothing. The, this is so cute that she's even calling in. <laughs> How do I fuck a guy that clearly wants to fuck me? I'm a hot girl that does porn. Do you think he'll fuck me? Come on. Would you... Would you be freaked out if porn star blood sprayed all over your face? <laughs> um, after I, after it came back clean, no. <laughs> but there would be a little. <laughs> this is the pre-tested blood. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too thrilled. Jesus. Um, 
this is such a first of all this this guy has unlocked a new level of scumbag I didn't even think was possible. Get a job at a STD clinic <laughs> to get pussy. <laughs> My hat's off to you, sir. Remember the bud the which commercial was the Real Men of Genius commercial? Yes, yes. Real yeah. Men of Genius. <laughs> this is a real man of genius. Insanely good move, dude. The women who are coming who are the girls I know who are uh, who are regulars at STD clinics, mm -hmm. either like sex workers or they, or they are girls in an open relationship to get, you know, girls to get tested before or after each new partner and who are, you know, cool. S responsible. Respo they're responsible, hot, slutty. Mm -hmm. One of the best combinations. <laughs> yeah. That's like my favorite. If I had to pick three, I'm taking those three over anything. Um so t again, a tip of the hat to this How guy. I found that I found most guys working at those clinics are gay. Right. Because most of those clinics are gay clinics. Right. That's who has to get tested more than yeah. everyone else. And like, he did a compliment her outfit. Yes, so he that, could. that's what I thought right away. Right. Like the outfit compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. But we're dressed the same. He might be bi. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing a fuck he's wearing a tube top and <laughs> <laughs> knee highs as well no she's probably wearing fucking all hoodies that's the other thing these girls these girls will they will be comfy when they're off the clock which is another thing I really respect about them a lot of sweats you're right a lot, a lot of sweats, sweats which I love yeah uh, so uh, um, go ahead Louis well I mean it's like the problem is really the real it's like it's actually like a classic problem brought into like a new kind of weird situation where it's like you have a place you regularly go Right. Do you try and date the person that's right. there? Because that can mean you can't go there anymore. Yeah. Which is like, usually it's like a, a coffee, coffee shop. We have had this exact question about a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, that's From a guy that has no shot, though. <laughs> the this, is the this is the difference. It's an STD clinic with a woman that has no problem whatsoever uh -huh. here, right? It's but funny yeah. he waits. I see. Yeah, definitely. Wait till those results come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, believe me. Yeah, he, he won't be interested. At, you know, I think she's going to come back clean, though. She sounds she sounds uh, responsible here. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, that is something you have to you have to think about is how much do you want to fuck this guy versus how convenient this clinic is? That's the real question. Yeah. Yes. And I would say I would say give it a beat. Right. Mm -hmm. Give it a month. Maybe go back in there next time you see him in person. Right. Like I would say give it a beat so that you can really think because it sounds like you're swept up in this fun interaction. Um, you know, you really want to fuck this person, whatever. If you can, if that initial, if that initial like wave of attraction subs or like desire subsides mm -hmm. and you can really think about this and be like, I want to fuck him. Like, think about the doomsday scenario of you have to find a new clinic. Is yes. that worth this yes. dick? That's really the math you have to do. And if it is, and if you think ultimately it is, then there's no question. Like, he gave you his number to call to call back. Um, like, if you have any questions, you call back with a dummy question. Yeah. See what the vibes, if the vibes are flirty, then you can be like, Here's another question. Would you want to go out for a drink? Yeah. He's going to say yes. And you could even be like, and if you can't answer because you're uh, at work or whatever, you know, uh, whatever, just let me know later or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like, I, th I think you'd be fine doing that. Um, the other but, question is, do you want to date someone who's a bad phlebotomist? I mean, this person, <laughs> I've never heard yes. of the blood spraying all over someone's right, face. Right, 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 like, right. I've, I've had blood drawn so many times. That is true. I mean, this person is bad at their job. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing Looney Tunes shit with your blood. <laughs> um, yeah, if that's how careless he is with, with the blood, what's he going to be like with your pussy? That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> although that is also, it is so, this is a this is such a cute story. It's like a meat cute. It's, it's like a, a meat filthy cute. meat it's cute. A yeah. It's a dirtbag meat cute. Because yeah, yeah. that's like, he was so flustered because of how yeah. hot you were. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, He spilled right? blood <laughs> instead of like, again, a lot overdoing the foam on your yeah, latte. Yeah, yeah. This is actually really cute. This is adorable. But anyway, um, yeah, that's you got to do the math. I would say give it a beat. Do you really want this? And then do the math of like, is it worth potentially never going back here, even though it's so convenient? Mm -hmm. And if it is, call back with a little. The, the, there's nothing to worry about here. He's not going to say no. Oh, I just realized, but it is really hard to 
to date someone at your that works at your regular STD clinic. Yeah. Right? Because they're like, well, why are you coming back in? He, you know what I mean? Well, like, I mean... I know that she's a porn star, but I'm just saying... He would have to... I feel like anybody who dates her no, okay. needs to understand this Okay, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah I guess He's so. not going to be like, well, with my salary as a guy working at a free clinic, <laughs> I'm going to retire you, baby girl. <laughs> if she even wants that. Um, so anyway, good luck. Sounds... You're in the clear. You just have to decide if this is what you want. But it's adorable. This is a very... This is... I love an adorable dirtbag story. Yeah, really next, sweet. Next question, Big L Dunce. Hey, Stav, Eldis, love you guys, love the show. Hello, esteemed guest. Um, so I'm calling Stav to, uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Uh, I'm thinking of going into therapy to, you know, deal with all the issues I've got. I know I have to have goals going in, so, you know, like, fucking, you know, uh, I want to deal with my anger issues, mm. overeating, uh, you know, and the fact that I'm probably bipolar. I want to get all that sorted out. But um, I'm a little nervous that it's like, because I hear stories all the time of people who go into therapy and it doesn't stick, and I really tend to overthink things. Um, and I just worry that it's not going to work out for me and it's not going to stick. Um so I know you've been to therapy before, and I just wondered if you've ever had these doubts before going into therapy or if you have any advice for that. So um, thanks a lot. Love the show. Looking forward to seeing you when you come to Tampa. Uh, you have a great day. Love you, baby. Bye. There he is. Okay, buddy. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, I think that's all pretty standard. I think people do worry about therapy. Sure. Um, and the thing is, like, you have to look at it as, like, it's like going to any doctor. You might go to a doc. I've gone to doctors, and I have just not liked them. Right? Yeah. Like I've had to change my general, my you know general physician in New York. I've changed him like three times, and I'm probably going to change. I know me and Eldis go to the same guy. Eldis loves our guy. I don't know that he's the guy. I got him when I didn't have any money, and I think now it's time to upgrade For to sure. a doctor that's not in you know above a. I'm not going to say what store, but. <laughs> It's an embar. It's not where you want your doctor to be. I know what you mean. Um, for um, anyway, but that's something to consider, right? Is that like it? it you are going to see a doctor. You are going to see somebody, and uh, it's not. It's it's. It, you might take some time to uh, find the right guy for you. Yes, exactly. But when you find the right person, it does. It for everyone I've talked to, it is. It is the. Ability to change your life and yeah. and help you work through things. I think um, all of us have been in therapy at some point, um, and you know that there's just some, and it's it's it it's tough because it takes a while. Like all these issues are so interconnected and they're so uh, they're so like complex that you can feel like I've been in therapy. I, I was in therapy for a, a long time, and I was like this is doing nothing and then all of a sudden I would have I, f I felt like yeah I would have a breakthrough or I've had I've had friends who uh, I, I've convinced my family I've convinced friends of mine to go into therapy and I've had friends who I'm like what the fuck are they doing and then out of the blue they you know leave their job or they have this huge they do this huge thing that they were supposed to be that I thought they should have been done years ago but it's like clearly over time eventually it just like worked so it is something that if you if you know, and I think it's very helpful that he's going in with um, specific things he wants to deal with, sure. anger, overeating. I think that stuff is very, it's a good place to start, right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's that's my general advice on it is like, you know, it might take a little work. Don't get discouraged. Yeah. But it will be helpful, but it, will, it won't be overnight. Um, uh, yeah, I think all that and like. I think it's a little bit, not totally, I think I really lucked out or, or maybe it's just that thing, like I was saying with my parents, but like the first therapist I happen to see, I think he's great and it's helping me a lot. Yeah. Um, but I do think it can be for some people almost like dating. Mm -hmm. You have to, first of all, I would, I would find someone not just with reviews online, but through someone you trust who recommends them for yeah. a personal recommendation, if possible, yeah. if not go with reviews or a, online. or a different doctor. Who's like, I know I have a colleague who, yes, yeah, someone who really, good. someone who you trust who might. Who, who might be able to recommend you someone personally instead of just online reviews, if that's, possible. That's a great thing because there is a new type of doctor in today's age 
who is an incredible marketer. Yes. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. I dude. go to a podiatrist who's a solid, I have no, you know, uh -huh. he's helped me out, but he is so much better at digital marketing <laughs> well, than he is podiatry. But he's good. He's good. But he's like, and he's always like, he's upselling you shit. And he's like, I, there's this thing, there's that thing. And he's a good businessman. And that's the fucked up thing. Again, this is a fucked up thing about America is that our physicians have to also be business people. Yeah. They have to run a practice. But anyway, well, the worst is fucking dentists. Yeah, they're fucking scummy as Absolutely. shit, dude. Like, I went to one. I had a, a tooth that chipped a little bit. I call up one place. They're like, "Well, you're at least gonna have to get uh, uh, an X-ray. That'll be a hundred fifty bucks, and then everything else we um we can't tell you over the phone. We can't give you a quote." I call my mom's dentist. He's like. No X-ray needed. Come in. I'll fix it for fifty bucks. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. What is yeah, what? Yeah, like, yeah. what? I think the X-ray was like two hundred bucks. It was. It was no, insane. Dude, I dude. know. And I like. I found again a dent. I upgraded a dentist to like a like man a nice Manhattan dentist. Mm -hmm. And he's not trying to upsell you. He is not. But everything everything is a little more expensive. That's but fine. they are so professional. That everything's. But when I was like when I had this tooth, mm -hmm. which I need, it got fucking chipped in my sleep i don't know how <laughs> that sucks it's, i woke up one day my tooth was chipped i was like you how the fuck is that? Tooth, i think i literally yeah, did. did and then i took a fat shit before i realized it so i i was gonna comb through my shit to see if the chip <laughs> is in glue there it back on. Yeah. <laughs> no dude that tooth piece is gone dude it i just wanted done. to see i wanted to, i just wanted to see that it was in my shit i just wanted to know where it was but anyway i was like a cell phone in the toilet is done for me <laughs> you want to dig your tooth out of shit and put it back in your mouth <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> but yes i have i went through that whole racket of like there was a guy who quoted me twenty thousand dollars for a new tooth versus like you know i got it all everything for like eight grand now it's chipped crazy so that is though but, but yeah. still like twelve thousand more I no mean, it's crazy anyway but yeah um that's a good point is like go yeah get somebody you trust either, a personal recommendation instead of just reviews if possible yeah. if not be okay with saying it didn't feel right i need to go to someone else yeah you know? But it is a delicate thing. It's like you also don't want to be giving yourself like an out and be like, uh, yeah, this therapist didn't feel good because they made me t confront something I didn't yeah, want yeah, to yeah. talk about. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. You have to be honest with yourself. And you have to be willing to do the work. I feel like a good rule of thumb is like if there's something just deeply like irrationally in you that's opposed to therapy <laughs> because like the mysteries and the unknowns of doing it like make you worry, that's probably a sign you like, should open yourself up You need up to them it. the most. Yeah. yeah. No, but, absolutely. But once you get to that point, too, it's like, you know, it's not like a magic pill or something. It takes work and, like, yeah. you know, it could take, like, weeks and months of just, like, feeling like you're not doing anything, but, like, you see the effects of it in, like, different ways. After, totally. After the, fa like, you know, just down the line. I mean, dude, we... This has been a crazy year for, for me and Eldis, especially. Like, we've been... We we launched the podcast. We were on a tour. Um, we recorded the special. I did this indie movie. I we were editing the special. Like we, it's been nonstop. And at a certain point, I just missed an appointment with my therapist, and I just have not gone in like months at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. And it's like I know I'm worse off for it. Like in these <laughs> like in these intangible ways. And there's other times that have and and I'm gonna see him again soon, but. Um, but there's other been other times in my life where I'm like, I'm feeling great. I don't need to go to therapy. And like, <laughs> like around two months off would coincide with me making a horrific decision. Dude, like totally. fucking up a relationship, <laughs> yes, like yes. making a bad business, like any, like, and then I would look back and I'd be like, how the fuck did I do this? And then I'd be like, oh, right. I should have gone to yeah, therapy. Yeah. Like I, I just, I'm so absent minded when I start to get busy. Yeah. I let all my health laps, yeah. right? And that's part of it. And so it's just very useful, I think. You know, It, it is scary where you, what's new to you. So you're like, so wait, so I just go to this forever? Is this forever now? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't know if you need forever, but I will say I have the same experience where I'm like, I think I'm doing pretty good. I think I got a handle on things. And then it's just like something happens and it's just like a, a fucking hurricane of anxiety in my head. And I'm like, what am I doing? I got to go totally, back. You know, totally. I just need some help right now. And there's you know? nothing wrong with like, you know, I was on a, I was at a place where it's like, like if I even just went every month, I mm -hmm. think I, I would have been fine this sure. last go around. But just letting it go completely and kind of losing sight of your like what you're working on mental health wise, because for me, it's just been I've been too, 
like busy with everything that's been going on. Yeah, same here. And it's just like, and you can't let yourself do that. And I think it's good. What what you're thinking is good, and I think all this is right. If you're if you're nervous about finding out <laughs> that you're bipolar, <laughs> that's that's you should find out. Other than you know, potentially ruin your life and all your you know relationships yeah. by letting it go unchecked. And also, uh, let a doctor tell you. I, I have this thing, and, and Soder has a Dan Soder has a great bit about it. But like, let a doctor diagnose you with a clinical thing yes, instead yes, of you yes. using TikTok to tell Absolutely. you that you, have, that you have. That's that's a Dan Soder bit, but yes. it's like seriously, like. Yes. You're not bipolar till someone who knows what bipolar, like uh, yeah. someone who studied that kind of stuff, diagnoses you. you Absolutely. So 100 Maybe you're just upset. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You're fully right. Like, yeah. maybe, yeah. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Maybe you do have it, but I'm saying let a professional find out and help you with the proper way. You know? 100%. Yeah. Let's get another one going, Big Eldest. Hey, Stavi, baby. Um, I have a dilemma that I need your help with. Okay. So the guy I'm dating wants me to fully shave everything downstairs, which I don't want to do. Okay. And, you know, I keep things trim and tidy down there. It is not a crazy situation. I've never had any complaints. But my boyfriend says that when he goes down on me, the hair rubs on his face and that it hurts what? him. And... So I need a man's perspective. Like, is that bullshit? Is he just trying to get his way by saying that? Or is this an actual phenomenon? The pussy hair on the face irritation phenomenon. Mm. So thank you. Kiss, kiss. It's got to be rough dating a, a pedophile. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, you keep the, like, okay. I have been in situations where I'm just like, this is a little too much pussy hair, <laughs> sure. right? Where I'm like, can we maybe get a little trim? But if yeah. you're a trim, if you're if you're like you know if you're into the trim, that's crazy to me to ask for a full shave if you're if you're already trim. Like my my perfect situation is a trim. Yes, it's like little bit of pussy hair. Yes, nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Like even a sh I'll even take a strip. Before I'll take no pussy hair. I think the hair. strip is where it's at. Strip's of, yeah. great. Strip's the most. A little, little Hitler. Ball, you're right. Yeah, give me a little Hitler. <laughs> give me a little George Washington Hitler. <laughs> give me a little gay Hitler, baby. That's what I call pussy. Is smashing some gay Hitler. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, strip, I think, is like like no pussy hair at all. It's like, listen, don't get me wrong. I'll take it. And yeah, no I problems. would rather yeah, take yeah. that over a wild, yeah. overgrown yeah, bush personally. That's just yeah. who I am. But the perfect situation for me is a trim. And so I think that to say it hurts him is cra that's crazy. Well, wouldn't stubble hurt more? Stubble hurts. I also think it's like. I gotta know. Maybe try try conditioning. Maybe need a little conditioner mm, down there. How coarse is your pussy how hair? How coarse is your pussy hair? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. But seriously, if you if you're not if you're not conditioning it, if it's like, I, this is I have never come across pussy hair coarse enough. I to have. really. It's yes. it's not a coarseness thing, but it's like you know, it's like beard stubble. If she keeps her shit trimmed, it could be like some pussy stubble that uh, can, that can like rub on your face or something. When I, you're like but see, I don't down. think she's I don't think she's going down to a number one. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like she's shaving the sides and trimming the top bush. Well, what is it? maybe? I, I mean, I have no idea how how much she's. She says she keeps it neat. You know what I mean? So who knows what that means? That's true. But it really is. I'm, I'm she not, doesn't seem to me that she's getting the razor out to the point where stubble happens and she's letting a five o'clock shadow grow on her pussy. Not stubble, but I think in general, like, you know, trimmed pubes are pretty short, like whether it's like a little longer yeah, than usual that's or shorter fair. than usual. It can so be. You could have like that scratchy little stubble but effect. But also... It can be coarse. If you have coarse hair, it can be coarse. Condition. I'm not I'm not joking about the conditioner. Like, <laughs> Interesting. Can, if you don't want to trim it, at least condition it. You smooth it out, you know? Huh. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever... Like, because even the biggest bushes I've had have been, have seen kind of soft even. Because I, I don't know if they're too overgrown, they kind of become a, What, did like, she use a moisturizer soap? I don't you know. know. I'll using, have to she, ask her. You know. She's married with a child now. Uh, no, no, I was talking about that. I was talking about that. <laughs> no, don't ask her about her bush. I was talking about this lady. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, okay, so we've had now, but I'm also, 
I'm thinking about the mechanics of eating pussy, and it's like most of your face uh-huh. is not really on the. We're talking about the top that's stubbly, right? It could be anywhere, man. It could. I mean, you see, bushes can be all around. It could be. It could be the but side of her thighs. She's not you know? talking about side of thigh. She claims to keep it neat, which to me feels like we're just talking about the top. It doesn't. I think it just means not letting it. Like I keep my pubes neat. Which mm-hmm. means I got shorter pubes. There's right. not a part of it that's ever waxed. It's all right, got some right, hair at some right, point. So right, that's, right. that's me with neat pubes. Interesting, you know, interesting. Which are not neat right now. I got I to really, <laughs> yeah. let, let it go like you let the therapist go. I got I to... These pubes are wild right now. Um, I would also say that, like, it's a little weird that he gave this as the excuse. But also, like, people... And I made the pedophile joke or whatever. But it, straight up, it, it feels better. There's less friction when you're... Because the dick has... No hair. The hair's, you know, away right. from the dick. The pussy lips have hair. So mm. pussy lips without hair, it feels better for both people, I think. Interesting. No, you don't think so? I I I guess I guess I don't think about hairy pussy lips. I feel like once you're in the pussy, there's no hair involved. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not like I know that, but I'm just saying like it just feels it does feel better. It feels like total because look, you're trying to like I mean, I'll start to the two camera. Please. Like, two you're camera. trying to like Yes. Right, there's that part, mm-hmm. that part right there. When yes. you go, well, I know once you're in there, yes. But like that moment feels uh-huh. way better, dude. And then you can slip out and go back in, and there's not that out outside friction with the hair. But see, I think a shaved pussy more often than like I've encountered stubble because of shaved pussies. If in fact, I would say <laughs> I have hurt, my face has been hurt more By from a yes. stubbly pussy. Than a trimmed pussy. You know the the tell joke about that? Like, your pussy's been up late trying to solve a murder. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes, that's a classic. Um, Look, we're going to have to look at your pussy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Try conditioner at first. Yes, try conditioner. Yeah. But I do think this feels a little like bullshit, right? Doesn't yes. this feel like a yes. guy who wants a there's, shaved pussy? There's like, yeah. there's like credence to what he's saying, but at the same time, it feels like a bullshit excuse. Like he's just like grasping for something. Right, right, it's right, like, right. Even in situations like that, if there's like a stubbly pussy or something, you just like, you know, correct how you lick the pussy. Absolutely. So you don't scratch your face. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Absolutely. this guy can't say like my, my fucking face or nose or whatever hurts every time I like eat your pussy because like... You're like not he clearly really just wants her to shave her yeah. pussy. Well, you know what it could be though. There is this. Maybe mm-hmm. he's saying it hurts, but he's really thinking kind of stinks. Mm-hmm. And some of the stink is from the 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 <laughs> retention of, of yes. excretions in the yeah, hair, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is another problem with pussy hair right. in general. <laughs> right, that right. There's there's traps, excretions, there's piss, traps, there's all, the pheromones. You know, like when you when you go down on a woman who has pussy hair. That first mouth is a mouthful of piss, dude. You're getting, you know what I mean? Like that, that first lick is straight up piss. You gotta lick your way through the piss to get to the pussy, you know. And when there's no pussy here, that's not an issue. So we could be like, man, it's like a piss. It's like a little bit of nasty. Yeah, Just, yeah it hurts me. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? It's, yeah, it almost yeah. seems like less rude to say it kind of hurts my face than like then your pussy it's a little stinks. funky. It's a little. It's a little. You know. Now our friend here seems pretty. She seems pretty open. So, is it possible your pussy stinks? <laughs> if if no. Then I do think that <laughs> if, because that's a good point. <laughs> if no, then I think, yes, you're right, Aldous. This is like, this is like a, he has plausible deniability here, but I don't know that his co- his case would stand up to cross-examination. <laughs> like, it hurts is kind of crazy. It is a little crazy. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, and look, if is there is there some compromise here? You know what I mean? Can you trim it a little more? <laughs> like, or, or is there, or, you know, for uh, deep his conditioner, de- try deep the conditioner. Condi- yeah. That Believe would be, in. that Believe would be in. an interesting way to call yes. his bluff. Yes. Is yeah. to go, is to try and make your pussy hair softer. Um, <laughs> I've never conditioned my pubes personally. What? I don't, con- I don't shampoo my pubes. Pu- it's all, sh- it's all soap. Come on. You should put no, your pubes. <laughs> Elvis, I bet you probably need to with that coarse ass fucking <laughs> No, never my pubes, but I definitely have like my my beard and stuff. Mm. Yeah, you condition your beard, right? I can I have I've I've beard oil that I sure. leave in as conditioner. Yeah. Probably pussy beard hair oil. Beard hair is closer to pussy hair, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Probably. So for sure. depend you know, depends on the woman. It does. You like you said, you know, some there are some coarse there is some coarse pussy hair out there. Yeah. Um so yeah. Now, our final vote is 
I think it's probably bullshit, but that's my take. But you could, you could, if you wanted to continue down this path, you could condition your pussy hair as an olive branch. Um, and if if you really don't want to shave your pussy, then guess what? You don't have to shave your pussy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, as long yeah, she says tidy. Trim is even, she said trim and tidy, which is different than just trim. Trim and tidy to me says like, you know. Shaved would have been the word she used if she shaves it. She doesn't shave it. She keeps it trim and tidy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's doing what I do, basically. What I used to do before I just gave up. But, uh, you know, she's just, it's shorter pubic hair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what it is. Yeah, again, look, without looking at your yeah, pussy, yeah, we, uh, really we're just, we're hamstrung here. <laughs> um, but I think as long as you're being honest about its tidiness, and we can also, uh, if you personally can dispel the pussy stink accusations hurled at you by Louie. <laughs> um, I'm just saying it's, <laughs> it's a possibility. I'm not saying you got a stinky pussy, but yeah. I'm saying, you know, sure. you didn't say you don't have a stinky sure, pussy. Sure, you know she didn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, g- give it a little fucking conditioner. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you really want to, clearly this is something. The, the way you would know if it's about hurting himself or not is if you if you just surprise him with a shaved pussy and his eyes light up like it's Christmas, it's not about how his face feels. <laughs> you know, there's a way to find out if he's lying or not. Yes, yes. Totally. So that's another possibility. But anyway, good luck. He should be able to power through as long as the bush ain't wild. Now, I, this has, I have had arguments when pussy hair is out of control where I'm like, come on, can we get it a little... Can we get it a little under control here? I'm no again. I was never. I'm never a shave it, wax it every once in a while as a little treat. That's nice. Would be nice, mm-hmm. but no, no dated. That's not necessary. But I have come across some out of control situations where I'm like, come on, I'll trim my shit up too. I'll, and listen, if a girl asked me to shave my dick completely, it would be weird. But I would. Again, then then I'd really look like a fat horny baby. It, you can't be fat as shit with just like a little yeah. a little roll that eats up most of your soft yeah, dick you too. You can't trim your shoes. No, you, you can't gotta, be you fat can't as shit. Totally it's like fat. Gotta, it's like yeah, yeah. It's like beards with when you're that fat. It's like you gotta have to keep a beard. I I can't grow a good one or else I would. But it's like very fat men have to have beards to give the uh, illusion of a jawline. Yes, you do not want to see. How round my penis area is <laughs> yeah. if I don't have some pubes. Yeah, your pubic jawline needs <laughs> to be established. <laughs> All right, big L dunce. One more time. I and take watch. A piss. Yeah, take a piss, dude. Is that okay? All yeah, right. yeah, for sure. All right, Louis back with a nice empty bladder. <laughs> Eldest, what do you have for us, pal? The transcript Yo, what's up, right? Davi? No. And hello to your guest. Um, <laughs> I just have a quick question for you. I'll keep it short. Um, I moved into a new apartment, moved out of my parents' house like three months ago. Everything's nice, going man. fine. Um, except for the fact that my neighbor, uh, the guy that was living right next door to me, he was a nice guy. Um, but the person who lives in the building next to us, his three... XL bullies almost oh. ripped apart his tiny dog. Oh, no. And this caused him to move out of state back home. <laughs> and he had a GoFundMe and everything set up for the dog. What the and fuck? And it was just a really bad situation. The dude got his dog taken away uh, like a couple months ago. But today I was coming back up to my apartment and the dude got his dogs back. And I know that they're <laughs> fighting dogs. I know that they're like framed fighting dogs and i'm wondering if i should report him to uh animal control or to the police um because those dogs are fucked up and there's a a lady that just moved in downstairs she got little kids and i can see those dogs taking a bite you know what i'm saying uh so let me know what you think uh love the pod i'll uh yeah that's it bye damn first of all all right his, this is, I'm sorry, the guy, the first guy's dog was killed by these bulldogs and he had to move out? Because the maybe he wasn't sure that the dogs would be taken away. Maybe the dogs were still there at that point. Yeah. It also seems like maybe that dog 
It was a small dog, but it didn't die, but it got like mm. fucked up. I this mean, why else would you start a GoFundMe? That's yeah, true. yeah. For the funeral. Um, <laughs> get, get him a nice fu- This is when I get real. This is when I get real Europe immigrant with it. And I'm like, just shoot the fucking dog and move on. Well, I'm like that the other way with the other guy's dogs. Like, fuck that guy's dog. No, no, for sure. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm with it in both cases where I'm yeah. like, we're letting dogs ruin our day. And I'm no, I know, like I know. 80% of the people listening think I'm a fucking, you know, brutal, like, piece of shit. But they're fucking animals. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Um, totally. All right. I mean, I really, that is something that the third world has right. Let dogs fucking be in the yard, throw them a little bit of fucking ground beef you have left over. <laughs> Don't be fucking... T- I remember, dude, my parents found a dog. Uh-huh. She was this little, adorable dog, and uh, it's hilarious because they didn't... My dad just straight up wanted to steal her. He, like, <laughs> he refused what? taking her to the vet, to, you know, because they're microchipped. Oh, He yeah. didn't want to take her to oh, the they vet. Found the dog. Okay. He just wanted to keep it and be like, well, it's my dog now. He took <laughs> him away. I'm like, you have to see if it's somebody's dog. You can't just fucking <laughs> keep a dog because you found it on the street. Turns out it was like an abandoned dog, and oh. she's little, so everyone thought she was a baby, but she's just like an old Shih Tzu, you know? Oh, like, okay, cool. But she's great. She's a she's a cool dog. Every, our family has, everybody loves her. Mm-hmm. We all, my mom loves her in a way that like I had. We didn't have pets when we were little because mm-hmm. we had asthma, and the dog has a heart problem, oh. right? And my mom, they took her to the vet, and they were like, well, um, she's either gonna be. We have to do this test, and it'll tell us she's either okay. Or she's going to need surgery. And my mom was like, how much, if she needed the surgery, how much would the surgery be? And they're like, $8,000 or something. And my mom was like, don't do the test. <laughs> my, mom was like, my mom was like, either the dog is living because she doesn't have this heart problem or the dog is dying from the heart problem. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Like, we're not, like, she, you know. And by the way, thank, my mom's a real one because who do you think's paying for that fucking dog surgery <laughs> if it needed surgery? <laughs> mom don't got a grand line around. We're picking up another weekend. We're, we're we're gonna have to sell one more, a little more merch to get that dog a fucking heart transplant. So shout out to my mom, or else there goes Eldis's Christmas bonus. <laughs> so you should really be thanking her, Eldis. Um, but um, now here's another. So now this guy's like, he's living with these terrifying dogs in the yes. complex, complex. My initial thing, not being in his position, is like ah. Snitching even on dogs is kind of gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like calling. I just hate calling fucking and like cops for anything that doesn't seem totally necessary. Whatever. The dog is gonna murder the kid. But that's the thing. The it's dog like, is gonna eat the kid. Yeah. I mean, that's like I know no, stitches I, get stitches, but the dog. The no, kid's no, no. Get an early it's, grade. it's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But it's not his kid. Like, shouldn't the kids' parents call fucking animal control? Well, you or could something? just maybe just let them know. Hey, there's these. At least, at first step, let the lady know there's these dogs there, and they've been a problem. Yeah. I don't know what it takes to get someone's get rid of these dogs. Can you just snitch on anybody? Hey, like fuck this guy's dog, and then, yeah, and then yeah, they take yeah. the dog away. Well, or? this clearly. I mean, you would think this incident would be kind of enough. Like, and he's. It's like he knows. You well, know. no, he just says the dog. My dog bit another dog. You know how dogs are. They do. do you know, there's ways to right, lie right, around right. that. It becomes two sided. But um, I just think those, you know, I don't know, man. I'm kind of like you, you with the dog thing. A Rottweiler bit me in the face when I was 10, so I don't have a lot of sympathy yeah, for the dogs. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, understand yeah. the way people let dogs take over their lives. Yeah. Someone else made a comment about it, how it's like these people, like, they stay single. They don't want they don't want the responsibility of a kid. And they're like, oh, I can't go out tonight. I have to stay home with my dog. Oh, dude, I've got to walk my dog. That's another element where I mean, I'm like, like, it's just ridiculous. I'm going to have to plan my life around a fucking dog? you got to be kidding me, I'm right? I'm never doing <laughs> that. No way. <laughs> like, I could see if I if I ever settled down, had kids, the whole thing. And someone's going to be at this house forever. And it would be nice to have a dog around your kids. Sure. Okay. And at one point in my life, I do want a dog. And maybe when I do, I mean, my life's been too, you know how our lives are too transient. You can't yeah, yeah. really, whatever. Maybe that's part of it. I've never felt the love of a dog. I'm sure that's what everybody's going to say to me. Um, <laughs> but in this case, yeah, I, I, it's, I mean, I would, I guess you at least, there's an incident has already happened. Yeah. And you could follow up and be like, hey, what's going on here? I thought this these dogs, like, I don't feel safe. You know, this isn't safe in the neighborhood. 
you what know, do you say about framed? They're framed. Do you know this uh, phrase? He said trained. Oh, trained. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, stop yeah, reading yeah, the yeah. transcript. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're trained yeah. fighting dogs. I mean, that's like... That's crazy. That's scary. That's dude. like having, we- you know, unregistered weapons yeah. <laughs> in yeah. your fucking house. Like if, yeah, I guess that's true. If your fucking neighbor had an AK-47 and would just... Sometimes it fired one bullet... At a little dog, you'd be like, ah, I could fire a lot more bullets at me. I don't um, know which is scarier. Which would you rather, AR-15 next door or three uh, XL bullies trained for fighting? I that's think, a great question. I think I would go gun. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't actually, the I guy, don't know. They're if both. anything, as long as the guy's not insane, statistically, if he's going to kill anyone, it's himself with the gun. Yes. So but the good. dogs, the dogs, go the front dogs everybody, might yeah. kill anyone. Yeah, you're right. And we got to know what kind of a yard situation, what kind of fences are in place. Right, you know what I mean? Right, but I, right. man, dogs that those are like, those are really big ones too. Yeah. Right? I mean, those are like, there's look no up, fence look up them. XL yeah, bully. Can we see what they look like? Isn't that the dog that was just banned in Great Britain? <laughs> I don't know. I'm serious. Oh, God damn. <laughs> those things are out of control. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're like awesome, ripped. dude. Those are sick dogs. I though. mean, and sometimes I know people hate on pit bulls, Damn. and I've seen like sometimes pit bulls can be like almost adorable, like cow like. I kind of love those dogs, to be honest with you. I kind of yeah, want one. Yeah, yeah. Kinda, they look pretty good. My, tough. They my pretty dream cool. dog would be you mix that with a really fat bulldog and just kind of get a chubby, jacked one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I want. <laughs> I want a half English, half XL. My, uh, my sister used to have a, it was half English bulldog, half pug, and that was a cute XL. <laughs> it was cool That's a good dog, yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right, yeah. I guess you could follow up with the situation. You, you're in a new apartment. I want, like, I guess it's probably not a good apartment. Call. There's no, like, HOA or anybody or any kind of, you know, anybody who you can check in on this. But Well, this is his first apartment. He moved out of his parents' house, like, three months ago. The, and I'm going to say one thing to look out for is, uh, is the... The yard full of fighting pit bulls next door. <laughs> when you when you're checking out an apartment to yeah, rent, maybe that's true. maybe say, "Oh, there's a there's fighting dogs." Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna I'm no thanks, no lease. You know. And, and I guess my other follow up is: Are you who has these dogs? Are you scared of them? Yes, there's that also. As a pro, yeah. like finding out you snitched. Yeah, that's kind of way more what I, my yeah. thing is because like, look, somebody with a kid snitches it's like i have a fucking kid to protect yeah some nosy 20 year old yes yeah, that yeah, yeah, you've yeah. never harmed yeah yeah yeah. oh your gay neighbor got his shih tzu fucking ripped the <laughs> throat ripped out that's not you bro you i mean i know that's like true there is a little bit of like this guy's like why are you in my fucking bit did you call like yeah. god forbid it kind of gets back to some lunatic yeah. who has who breeds fighting dogs yes, and trains yes, fighting exactly. dogs. Do you want to be on this guy's shit list? I say you call up, but you do a fake voice. Maybe like a Mrs. Doubtfire kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Hello! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some very dangerous bullies <laughs> that my black neighbor has. <laughs> I don't care that he's black, by the way. I'm just giving you details. <laughs> I mean, sure, statistically, is it more often black people that, oh, it's not. Uh, okay, well, listen, I don't want to really argue with you about this, but... Racist Mrs. Doubtfire. Racist, racist Karen. Racist Karen Mrs. Doubtfire. Why do only... Uh, they're only 12% of the population, but they have 80% of the fighting dogs. They're like, okay. We were kind of with you at first, Mrs. Doubtfire. And we will check this out, but you really should do a little more research on what you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. That's making my face hurt. Oh, oh that's fucking funny. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah. That's what I would have to weigh if I were you. It's like, are you scared right. of this <laughs> person? Who are you, more scared of the dogs or the more person? More scared of, yes, yes. That's exactly it. <laughs> um, and, yeah. And, 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 if you, and if there's some kind of a coward's way to report this. Yes. Maybe do it, but that is fucked up. Sorry, you have to deal with that, and good luck. And I, dude, I feel bad for those fucking dogs, man. Like True. a fighting dog. Well, it's like it's also like the fact that he trained it's them such to be a fighting horrible dogs. Life. That's what makes them dangerous. Yes, is that yes, the way this yes. guy has trained them? You know. Yeah. All right. What do we got, LD? Hi, Sal. Hi, LD. Hi. Guess whoever it is, I need help. <laughs> I am in college. Um, uh, this year I decided to get a random roommate nice. and she 
it, I'm white. Oh, and no. she makes <laughs> um, cultural dishes. Cultural dishes. And they sound wow. like shit. And oh, I don't no. know what to say. I literally can't be in the room when she makes these things. Because it's not so bad in the room things for hours. I've had to sleep in my friend's dorm. I don't know what to say because I can't be like, hey, you're like cultural dishes. And I'm like, shit. But like they do. So please help me out. What do I say? What do I do? How do I break it to her that like it hurts you stop that? Thanks. Please help me out. I'm really struggling on the verge of tears every time I walk into my room because I just want to barf. Okay, wow. audio quality not great, but I, I believe what she's saying wow. is the cultural dishes. The cultural dishes smell like shit. Didn't say which culture. Yeah. I have a guess. What's your guess? I'm not going to say it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it could, I, I don't know, it could be any number of... It could be a lot of them. could be know? any number of them. Um, in a dorm, though, she's cooking? What the fuck? No, she, she's not in a dorm. She's in a college. She's in college. Oh, okay. So yeah. she's part of oh, okay. got a, ran, ran, got got a random got roommate. That. They yeah. cook food. I guess that's true. They have those little apartments. <clears throat> um, damn. I mean, my advice is fucking... Grow up and try some spice in your food. Like, what's your fucking problem? Like, yeah, there's flavor in some dishes in some regions of the world. Yeah, we're sorry. I, I just can't buttered be- noodles. I can't have buttered noodles with a little salt. And if I'm feeling crazy, a little garlic salt. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, there is no way around this. Like, unless she's cooking crazy shit. Like, if she's, if yes. she's cooking, like, Chitlins you know, fermented, fermented yeah. like, f- dead fish shit. It could be, you know what? Kimchi is pretty stinky. Mm. And I love kimchi, but it stinks. You got to, you know, they have special fridges for, to make kimchi because it stinks so bad. Put it yeah. away from the other shit. Right, right, Because right. it stinks. So if it's on that level, if it's, that, if it, then, if, that, is a, that is a legit concern. If you know? the process is very stinky or she's, like, constantly has, like, fish guts or whatever yeah. lying around. Yeah. That's one thing. But if it's just, like very fragrant you really can't say shit if they're using some kind of strange ingredient that really bothers you you could be like hey could we cut this down a little bit yeah or you could even be like see it's hard because you you're in an apartment with a kitchen you can't be like there's the one way to go about it would be like hey all the cook any cooking bothers me no not cooking. this specific <laughs> it doesn't happen just, not yours. Even if it was fucking hamburgers, I would be <laughs> coughing a lot, right? Um, ridiculous. That's really funny. But I'm just like the way she says cultural dishes, it's makes awesome. Me, it makes it makes me blame her. I think hundred percent. Mean, it's like a, like a, I a hate, true lack of, I, of any kind of exposure to other foods. What yes, it sounds like yes. cultural dishes. Cultural you know dishes I mean? is so funny. <laughs> we are. It. I mean, you seem like a nice girl, but you are giving us like. Uh, you're in your embryonic Karen phase yeah. right now. Yes, exactly. Where it's yes. like you could go one of two ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is, is a big moment in your life. <laughs> okay, and you have to recognize: Are you in the wrong here? Are the dishes just a little over the top? Like, I had a I had an Ethiopian roommate, mm-hmm. and he would he would like he would cook he wouldn't cook a lot, but when he did, it was very fragrant, but it was good. Yeah, it was like I was like, this is a weird smell that I'm not used to. But it doesn't smell bad. Exactly. And most of the time, you know, most ethnic foods, my house smelled, you know, you know, we had a lot of fucking Greek food getting cooked. Mm-hmm. And there were some dishes that smelled like dog shit. My mom would make um, a cauliflower dish Insane. that was so bad. It smelled like farts. The whole fucking <laughs> house smelled horrible. And there's how did it taste. I was not. I was never tasting that. I was like, I'm, I'm like, it smells like farts. I'm not tasting it. There's no way it smells. It, it doesn't taste. Even if it tastes better, it doesn't smell. It doesn't taste that much better. Um, so unless she's cooking up like, what's that one fruit durian or whatever that smells? Yes, that does smell. That, that, that does that. That shit does smell. Unless does she is cooking up like rotten, you know, fermented fish and durian and all yeah, this yeah, shit. Yeah. Unless it's really atrocious, you might just have to buck up here. And just like, all right, she's making a fucking curry. 
who cares? It's, it's really, it really is, it really is dependent on the food. It's just like it's dependent on the pussy. I mean, all these things are really yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. all, it's all like if we could be there and smell it. I know. And it's too I bad know. you can't sell it, send a smell over the internet. I would <laughs> love to smell. I do. I kind of want to take a couple whiffs. Yeah. To just know what we're dealing with here. And you might need to, here's what you might need. You need a second and even third opinion. Yes. And they can't be as white as you are. <laughs> yeah. You need, you seem, you seem Midwestern regular ass white. You need an, an ethnic white of some kind. Yeah, yeah, at least. Do you know a Greek? Do you know a fresh off the boat? And by the way, within one generation. You can't have some bitch. You can't have Ashley Tamborelli, whose family's been here for six generations. It's like, yeah, I'm Italian. You need somebody whose parent speaks a different language, has an accent, to come in and yeah. tell you if yes. it's really too bad. Yes, that's Okay, it. you need someone between your level of whiteness and your friend's level of ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> your roommate. So now she might have gotten a completely fresh off the boat roommate. And there is a little bit of cultural thing, but it's like, you re this is what you have to do. Are you in the right or not? And the problem is, even if you're not, you're just, this is what happens when you have a, you know what yes. the problem is? You don't have enough friends to not have a random roommate. <laughs> yeah. By the time, by the time you're in the kitchen, that's probably, you're in upper class, right? Like at least in my college, you were in dorms your freshman year. Sometimes even your sophomore year, you got the apartments with kitchens your junior and senior year. With your friends. You didn't have yeah, a yeah. fuck. You don't have one other bitch that can be in your fucking. <laughs> Maybe it's your personality. That's the issue here. That opened you up to the smells of the Orient. Maybe maybe all the other kids at her school are cultural and she doesn't yeah. get along with them. <laughs> There's too many cultural motherfuckers <laughs> moving into this neighborhood. It's getting a little too cultural around here for my taste. That's a nice. That's a new euphemism is cultural um so anyway good luck sorry to be a little harsh on you uh but uh, find that here's the thing you need to find out if it's you or not because if it's you you need to buck up and just grow up and smell smell a couple of vegetables you're not used to if it's not you then you still have no out here there's no way to complain about this without sounding racist. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, but at least you know it's not you. And then it's like, all right, well, let's never get a random roommate again. You're just learning a lesson here. Yes. Where it's like, look, it, it's like this is just what can happen if you open yourself up to the random horrors of, of you know, of random selection. I mean, and it, the real problem is, is the cultural thing. Because, like, there's a thing about, like... Um, just microwaving fish in the office microwave. You right. know what I mean? So people just don't, you know, like fish. It could just be fish. It could just be fish. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, true. But the, it's the cultural thing that makes it a little questionable, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. That is true. Yeah. What do you cook? You know what I mean? That is, I mean, I get it. This bitch is probably never cooked. Like most American college students have cooked like pancakes. Yeah. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. She probably just doesn't cook at all. And this is just zero to 100 for her, right? Yes. She's like, these are the dishes she needs. She should be trying these at 34 and stealing them for her blog, <laughs> for her mommy her mommy blog. Like, also, like, some things stink and they taste good. There's cheese that stinks that tastes good. True. Cumin can sometimes have a B.O. vibe, but I fucking yes, love it. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes, it's like true. It's delicious. That's Kimchi true. Kimchi stinks and it tastes good. So maybe you need to get in to stink. Right. Get open your heart get to stink. And stink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Sorry. That's you know, that's not an easy one, but we're rooting for you. Um anyway, that's gonna do for our episode, folks. Louie, thanks for being here, man. Thanks this for was having so me. fun. Absolutely. That was fun. That was great. So fun. Go watch the special, guys. It's out on YouTube right now. That's right. Um, you're gonna love it. And uh, we will we will see you guys soon. Bye bye.